And there's a little tiny towel stuck in the corner right there. And it's where I lay it on the steering wheel. But I mean, I drive and I just put it on the beach. You can see what you can hear and check the volume. I think I need to change this. So it's on. Can you hear it? Is the question. Can you hear it? But but the the sound is good though. Yeah, okay, I can hear it. So the sound sounds good. Yeah, but this one wasn't. This one was how much just in the box. 30, 30, 35, but you know, you're not strong. I didn't. I already had a bunch of bobbins. I'll stick with my. Uh, so then you can see the chat. Yeah. Too. Okay. So the question I want to have. But I have filled all these files. Let me see what's on here. Good morning. Hello, Pam. Sorry. Um, hey, Pam. Do us a solid, would you? And let me let us know if um, what you see and what you hear is good. If we need to turn the volume up or we need to change what we're doing. Um. Or anything? DJ's watching the comments, so the problem I'm having is no, not to answer them. That's what you want to do? I'm saying. And I answered you. No, you got to so that it looks like it's coming from here. It's got to come from here. Okay, so as long as you can see that, and then I can move that, we're going to give everybody a few more minutes to get on, and then we're going to talk a little bit about what the heck we're doing. Okay, I'm going to turn that down so it doesn't, like, echo back. And I want to make sure I can see it on there. So we are totally making this up as we go. As we do. She says everything is great for her. Okay. Yeah, but I, I'm, if I try to monitor the chat, I'll get super distracted, and I don't need any help being distracted. Um, no, I just wanted to see how, how it worked. Okay. Does that look good? When I turn up the Wi Fi, just to help with Okay. Probably should have eaten breakfast. Are we missing anybody? Who is here, right? Pam's not here yet. No, I have No, I am. Um, usually drink my protein. Usually I drink my protein in my coffee. Hello, Mary Sue. All right, so as people are starting to hop on, I'm gonna sort of explain what's gonna happen because this is our first time doing a YouTube Live. So it seems like it's all working. Um, I, have, you look great, babe. 
I have a teenager that works for me two days a week. And I was like, hey, nerd, come help me fix, set this up. So he spent like two hours the other day getting the camera all. He's like, how tall are you? And I was like, short. So he got everything set up and it, and it works. It's great. Um, and there's no lag. Well, there's a little bit of lag yeah. on. So Karen's watching on her phone. There's a little bit of lag, but it doesn't matter. It's OK. We were just worried about the Wi-Fi up here because this is an old brick haunted building. So sometimes Wi-Fi is a little weird. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> we have seven people that showed up today for class. We're going to do our level best to not put them on the screen without consent. Um, but, you know, that was part of what you signed up for. So. <laughs> <clears throat> and everybody um, better be on their best behavior because Mary's there taking and notes. And Mary takes notes. No shame. Mary is the scribe of Five Little Monkeys. <clears throat> so, um, <laughs> oh, I bet she will. <laughs> All right. So, if you're new to Five Little Monkeys, I'm Angie. Um, my husband DJ is here too. We are, yeah, there he is. We are Five Little Monkeys, which is a quilt shop in the western end of North Carolina, just north of Asheville. So our store is about a 15 minute drive from the Biltmore House. If you know where that is. We um, kind of pride ourselves on being the weirdos in the quilting world. We like to do fun, unique stuff. Um, we are also Block Block ambassadors. So our mission is to teach. I, I always joke that um, that. Uh, I am um, preaching the gospel of block block because I love the accuracy that you can get in all kinds of things. So this is the quilt I'm working on right now. This is going to be a class that's available this summer. So this is a log a variation on a log cabin block. Um, I had the best time making this one block. So not only do you have super precise half inch finished logs, you have precise one inch finish logs, and then you have half square triangles in the center that you kind of do a flippy corner thing with. So this pattern is really great. We're gonna have this pattern available on our website soon. And this is going to be a class that we're gonna teach this summer. So part of what we're doing as this feature is uh, every other month, we're going to do a technique of the month but it's every other month. So I haven't figured out an acronym for that yet. And we were going to, we're going to teach a different ruler each time. So this time the ruler that we're talking about is the strip set ruler. If you like making strip sets or more importantly, if you don't like making strip sets or your strip sets come out wonky or your squares aren't square after you make your strip sets, that's what this ruler is for. So for instance, since you're on my YouTube, I have a video with this quilt as the cover that talks about taking a pattern and converting it into strip sets so that it goes faster, it's more accurate, and you enjoy the process just a little bit better. So go find this video where I talk about taking a pattern and converting it into strip sets. Then I show you how to use this ruler to do that with, okay? I have this quilt downstairs in my shop, but I'd have to get on a ladder to get it down and bring it up here. So. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a couple of other things that we've made using the strip set ruler. This pattern is called yeah. something frogs. But when you say enjoying it more, you don't like making 300 inch and a half squares? And Hell together? no. Oh. No. If I open a pattern that says cut 300 one and a half inch squares, I'm like, mm -mm, no. So that's the whole point to that. This is another quilt that I made using the strip set ruler. I'm going to, can you go find this pattern for me? It's on the wall. It's like halfway down the wall. But it's not it's a black, black and white. Mm -mm. It's a black and white pattern and it's something frogs. But I used the strip set ruler to make this quilt. Went super quick. I made this quilt in about two hours because the first part of the pattern is putting these two pieces together and sewing them together and then cutting chunks off. Same thing with this here. This is also a strip set. So any pattern that you open up that says sew strips together and then cut them into smaller sections is a strip set pattern. Here's another quilt that we did. Um, Mary actually made this quilt. And the center part of this quilt is a four patch. Four patch sections are perfect example of uh, strip sets. Four patches, nine patches, anything where you sew strips together and then cut segments apart is a strip set. So this perfect little four patch here is a great time to use your strip set ruler. 
So yeah, baby kissing frogs is the quilt that I just showed you. I really like these patterns. They're, they're um, by a company called um, AOK -OK Patterns. What I like about her patterns is they're all made with like four one yard pieces or four half yard pieces or whatever. But her patterns are all written in the pictures are all in black and white, which means you have to pick the colors that you want. So sometimes you see a pattern and it's pink and you're like, oh, I've got to pick out pink fabric or I've got to pick out orange fabric or whatever it is. Her patterns are all written in contrast, light, medium, dark. So it forces you to decide what you like. OK. All right. So that is the quilts that we're going to talk about first. And now we're going to talk about making strip sets. So the first thing we're going to talk about when we make strip sets is cutting. You want to cut very precisely when you're making strip sets, because if you don't have accurate cutting, you're not going to have accurate sewing. I always say that the Holy Trinity to quilting is cutting straight, piecing with a, with a quarter inch and pressing with intention. So if you do those three things, you can make any quilt you want. So here is a two strip strip set. The pattern that we're working with today is the China Girl pattern. Here is one section of that quilt. Um, I had every intention of showing you a picture from my Facebook page from 12 years ago, the first time I made this quilt. So here's the story portion of our video. This pattern was in, I don't remember what magazine it was. It was a Fonz and Porter magazine or a quilt sampler magazine or I don't know, some magazine. And this pattern was in the magazine. And about two weeks before I got the magazine, my best friend's um, parents, it was their wedding anniversary. And she's like, hey, how do you feel about making a quilt for my parents? And I was like, oh, I'd definitely make a quilt because they were my other parents, right? Um, so I made this quilt out of blues and yellows. It was a white, uh, uh, mostly batik, cream background, blues and yellows. And the, the picture popped up on my memories. You know, Facebook shows you memories, some you wanna see and some you don't. Um, the picture popped up on my, my memory page about two months ago of when I made the quilt and when I gave it to my secondary parents. Pam, there's a, there's a chair for you right here if you want it. Um, about, and I had, I was already working with Jana from Block Lock at that point and the memory popped up on my screen. And so I sent her a picture of the picture. I was like, look, I made this quilt 12 years ago, long before she ever made it into a pattern when it was just a memory, um, just a picture in a quilt or a pattern in a quilt, a quilt magazine. So she she calls me back and she's like, I have to tell you the story about that quilt. So she was, I think she said she was in a doctor's office and she had just gotten the news that her mom was dying. And um, she said, you know, so she was upset and she's sitting in a doctor's office and she was looking around the doctor's office like you do because you got nothing else to do. And there was a vase with some like silk flowers in it in the doctor's office. And the pattern that was on the vase looked like this. So she had this emotional feeling of how her mom, the person that was stability in her life, was now fragile like a China doll. Um, and then she had this, there was this Chinese uh, styled vase that was sitting there. So she sat there in the doctor's office and sketched out this quilt pattern. So not only was the quilt pattern very emotionally important to her, but it was to me. I had no idea that I was going to meet her, make her stuff, support her stuff and all that stuff 12 years ago when I made this quilt the first time. So this quilt's important to me, um, and I haven't made it since then. I made it 12 years ago, but I rarely make the same quilt twice because there's too many quilts to make. So on that note, um, we're going to start talking strip sets. The first thing to pay attention to, remember I said cutting is important. Cutting is very important. So when we do this class, the first thing we're going to talk about is cutting very straight strip sets. So we are going to cut in the, the, I think the pattern calls for one and a half or one and three quarters inch strip sets. The first thing to remember when you are making strip sets is that your seam allowance matters. Everyone has a different way that they get to a quarter inch. Some of us don't care enough and we just kind of wing it. Some of us are very accurate and want a scant quarter inch. Some of us press seams open. Some of them press seams to one side. We all have different ways of getting there. I'm going to show you my opinion on how to get a perfectly straight strip set. First thing is cut it straight. So I'm going to turn my camera down so you can see my cutting and my pressing. And we are going to see how this works. 
So it's going to be upside down for a second, but it's okay. Abe showed me how to do this yesterday, so let's see. All right. Well, that's where it's going to be, because I don't think I can turn it any other way. I'm going to walk it. Hey, Liz. How are you? No, that's her. Just trust me on it. All right. So we've cut our strip sets. The first thing that we're going to do when we press strip sets, and I'm going to give you a couple of techniques, a couple of tricks on this. If you so, so these were one and three quarter inch strips. I have sewn my strip down the center and pressed it to one side. I'm going to show you some tricks for getting this super, super flat. See how flat this is? I very rarely will ever press a seam open. And if I press a seam open, it's on purpose. And I do things to support that seam later on. If you press a seam open, what happens is when you start to go and wash that quilt, you don't have any support. So if we were to press these seams open like this, I'm going to show you what happens. Maybe I will. I have pressed it so good it won't come apart. When you press your seams open, see how if I pull on that, you can see daylight? So if I were to now take this quilt and quilt it and put it in the dryer, wash it and dry it like is fine to do, the heat is going to make these fibers pull at each other. So see the sun, see the daylight between that seam? When your seams are pressed open, there's nothing anchoring those seams down. When your seams are pressed closed and then you quilt over that seam, when you pull on it, the quilting that's holding that seam down anchors it. So it's like building a block wall without rebar if you press your seams open. All right, now, now that I've done all of that explaining, I'm gonna show you why I'm gonna press my seams open right now. And so here's my pressing board. And this is how I made this yesterday. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my strip set and I'm gonna do some math. If this is one and three quarters and this is one and three quarters and I add that together, it's what? Three and a half, right? Three and a half? Which means if I have a quarter inch here and a quarter inch here, so anytime you're trying to do your math here, you're gonna figure out how many seams you have and you're gonna subtract a half an inch. So that means that this strip set should be exactly three inches wide if it's not so i have a three inch ruler here i'm going to lay it on my strip set it is exactly three inches wide if this were say an eighth of an inch short your seam allowance is too thick you need to cut your seam allowance down if this if you're seeing fabric on the sides your seam allowance is too narrow you need to shrink it in and i'm going to tell you until you know exactly how you get a quarter inch seam allowance practice this over and over and over again until you get it perfect and then remember what that setting is on your machine. Personally, I use a quarter inch foot and then I bump my needle over one notch. And that's how I get a perfect quarter inch seam allowance. Okay. So I have pressed my, I've made my strip set and I'm going to take this and I'm going to open it up and I'm going to press it open just for a second. Well, I'm not going to leave it open. I am also a big fan of steam because look at how flat that lays. So the reason I want this to be super flat is because now when I press it to one side, I'm not going to have a buckle here. Have you ever pressed your seam and you get a little fold in it or you get a little ripple? If you press it open first and it's really flat, now when I press it to one side, I won't have that ripple at all now this is just another trick for you to get that perfect quarter inch so if you're struggling with your quarter inch i want you to check your seam allowance and if you're still struggling a little bit press your seam open and then press it again to one side the other thing is block walk rulers won't work if you press your seam open there's nothing for it to grab onto okay so we're not going to do that so now i have my strip set and I have my strip set ruler. 
I'm going to show you how to trim down one set, two set, three set. Here's where the rulers are magic. The thing you always want to remember when you're using a block lock ruler is the logo goes on the low side of your seam. So people look at this ruler a lot and they're like, I do not understand what's happening here. What's happening here is you have a 9 16 inch etched groove in the back of your ruler that will lock onto your quarter inch seam. So if your seam's a little wonky, it's a little weird, you had some bias, something's going on that you're not happy about, the width of this groove accounts for all of that. And it's gonna push your seam into submission, all right? The reason there's a groove going both ways is sometimes you're gonna cut a shorter, um, a shorter strip set, and sometimes you're gonna cut a longer strip set. Either way, your logo is gonna go on the low side of your seam. So what does that mean? So this one is not a very wide strip set. It's pretty short. So I can use either way. Whichever side of this makes more sense to me or feels more comfortable to me, I can use that. But I know that I have pressed my seam this way. So when I say logo on the low side, if you feel the bump, it's like stitching in the ditch. So the low side of your ditch is where your finger stops. So if you go this way, it just runs over the edge. If you run your fingernail up and you can feel the groove, that's your ditch. This is the low side of your seam. Um, I always try to teach people that from the very first go. Sometimes it makes sense and sometimes it doesn't. But when you go on to other rulers, um, when you go on to other rulers, if you have that burnt into your head, if you have that logo low side burnt into your noggin, then it's always going to work. The first thing that I like to do is I like to cut a chunk off with my ruler. So here's, here's my point with logo low side. Here's my logo. Here's my low side. If I put it on the strip set and I push it, see how it grabs a hold of it? If I put it on the other side, my logo, if I put my logo on the other side and I pull it down, it'll grab it, but it doesn't push it into, into the lock. Okay. So I know that I'm going to, this is a one and three quarters inch strip. And so is this. So I'm going to cut most of the time when you're doing strip sets, you're going to cut them to be um, even to this size. So if I'm going to make squares, I'm going to cut strip sets that are one and three quarters. So I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to lock it onto there. I like to keep my ruler on my fabric to get it all pushed in straight. So see how I have a nice long strip that's locked into my seam? So I can cut a chunk off. I've got lots of really good mats. I don't necessarily trust them for measuring. I want to use the lines that are on my ruler. So now I have it locked in there. If I'm going to cut a square, I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to slide it down that groove until I get to one and one, two, three quarters. Now, depending on what rulers you're used to, this might be a little bit different for you, is your line is gonna sit right there on the edge of your fabric. Don't push your line past your fabric because you, you won't get an accurate cut. Okay, so you can cut this a couple of ways. You can line it up perfectly like that and cut your pieces off and now you get a perfect set. Let's say that your pattern wants you to cut um, four inch strips. Sometimes when you cut a strip set, you're not cutting squares, you're cutting other size pieces. You're still gonna lock onto your piece here. You're gonna slide down to whatever size you want it to be. And you're gonna cut it. Now you can do it the other way. You can take your strip set. This is already squared up on the one side. And you can slide it the other direction if you want to. You can use the lines on your mat and slide it the other way. I just don't find that to be quite as accurate, so I don't do it like that. But normally what I do is I get a good chunk, and then I start working with that. Okay? So if you're doing twosies, you can cut both sides off. So if you want to cut both directions and you're just doing twosy squares, you can clean up one edge and then slide it down and cut whatever you wanna cut. But just keep in mind that when you're cutting, you're gonna lock it into that seam and your little hashtag lines or whatever lines you're cutting with are gonna be right there on the edge. And then you cut your groove.
All right, so what if you have more than one seam? So like the quilt that we're making today has two Zs, three Zs, four Zs, and there's even one that has eight pieces in it. All right, so here's, here's one that has multiple different sizes. The sizes of your strip doesn't matter. If you have a longer piece, so here's a good example of this. If I try to use it this direction, my ruler's not big enough to cut all the way down. So in that instance, I'm going to turn it this way. I'm going to find a seam and I'm going to lock onto it. I'm going to lock onto this seam here. Okay. So it's locked onto the bottom. I've already got a straight edge over here. So let's say, for example, on this one, I want to cut three inches. Here's my one, two, three. I'm going to slide this over to the three line, lock onto my seam. And see when it locks onto the seam, the line straightens up over on the side and you get a perfect cut. So you're not locking onto every seam, you're just choosing one. And when you pressed it really straight, look at how perfectly your strip sets come out. So if you've ever argued with your strip sets, this is gonna fix that, okay? And that is honestly, that's how this ruler works. It is a really, really great ruler that shows really precise ways to make strip sets. So if you, let's say you pull out a pattern like this one, anywhere you see where there's a whole bunch of little squares that are all intermingled, you can use this ruler for that, okay? All right, does anybody have questions about how the ruler works, either in person or online? If you have questions on YouTube, you can pop it in the chat. We will try to present things there. What about you guys? Does anybody have anything that didn't make sense? I know you couldn't see it from where you're sitting, but I can, if you want to come over here, I can show it again. Speak now forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause you'll need it for today's class. Do you have your pattern? Okay. Rebecca, will get it for you. So, but if you want to come over here and look, I can do it again. I can do it as many times as you need. Okay. So I'm going to pull this down so we can talk about the one that we're doing today. So when we look at the block that we're making in today's class, you've got, yeah, probably should move it before I burn myself because you know, that's how I do. So here's a square. Here's a two square strip set that I've cut like that. Here's a three square strip set that I'm then going to sew onto here. That is how easy it is to make that block. And you're going to make your strip sets once, you're going to cut them all at one time, and then you can chain piece your blocks. Now, this one that has longer pieces on the edge is how you do this here. So you can make a strip set and then turn it into a completely different element, I think is pretty dang cool. You can even make this as a strip set. So this is, um, I don't remember the measurements exactly, but let's say that this is a four and a half inch piece and a three inch piece and a four and a half inch piece. Instead of cutting these pieces apart, you can sew them as one full strip set and then use your ruler to cut them apart. Okay, so there's lots of ways to do this in here um, and you get really good accuracy and see how everything lines up because the squares are perfectly sized. So. On all your strip sets, do the seams need to be pressed in the same direction? They don't have to be, but if you press them to the same direction, it's easier to lock on because you don't have to think about it and you don't have to go back and find it. So for instance, this one, see how I've pressed all of them one way? Because they're all pressed one way, it doesn't really matter which seam I lock onto because they're all going to grab in the same direction. So when I lock onto that one, it'll grab it. If I lock onto that one, it'll grab it. So if you press them all to one direction, then you can use whichever seam you prefer. You'll be happier if you do. Yeah, it does make it easier. Plus, the other thing that I do when I make strip sets is I sew this one to this one and I press it. And then I sew this one to this one and I press it like that. So I kind of just build them that way. Sew them on, cut them off, sew them on, cut them off. I also have a YouTube video that shows you how to use your block lock log cabin ruler to cut your strip sets to begin with. So if you sew them on, you can just chop them off. Can you go grab my, um, it's on the table. It's like a five eighths inch log cabin. I'll show how that works too. Cause that was a really fun technique. And I use that to do all kinds of things. 
not that one. It's different. Um, let me grab a strip set here. That... So the same quilt that, or the same ruler that I'm using to do this with, Huh, that'll work. So the same ruler that I'm using to do this with, I can make strip sets with. So if I sew two pieces of fabric together, let's say you're not really trustworthy on your cutting, and I know that I want this strip to finish an inch, I can use my one inch log cabin ruler. I've sewn it on there, I've pressed it to one side, I can take my log cabin ruler, lock it onto the seam right there. I'm not gonna use the strip set now, so it's okay if I mess it up. And I can just cut it and slide it. So see how the ruler pushes the seam into submission? So even if the seam isn't perfectly straight, as I slide my ruler down, see how the fabric moves into the groove? So whether you sewed this perfectly straight or not, or whether you um, are working with bias, it doesn't matter because you lock it into the seam and then you just trim it all the way down, okay? So you're gonna, this, once I sew this on again, this is gonna finish one inch. So I use my log cabin rulers for all kinds of things besides making a log cabin. Um, I have a quilt that has half inch finished strip sets which is downstairs somewhere. And that's exactly how I did it. I used this side of my log cabin ruler to make my strip sets and then I cut my pieces apart. Okay, so Sandra asked, um, I didn't know if pressing to the dark would override pressing the seam in the same direction. So pressing to the dark isn't so much a rule as a best practices. The reason we press to the dark is because you don't see a shadow behind the fabric. That really only comes into play when you have like a white background. And even then, it's more important for your seams to nest than your fabric to be pressed in the same direction. So in this instance, pressing in the same direction is gonna be more important. Um, whatever way you're going to trim. Now I will say with Jana's patterns, one thing I've lo always loved about her patterns is she always gives you pressing instructions. So every block gives you pressing instructions so that not only will they lock together, but when you join this block to this block, the blocks will lock together. So when I say pressing with intention, that's what I mean. It's not that your pressing necessarily is perfect. It's that you're doing it on purpose. You're thinking about what you're doing when you press with the end result in um, in your thought process. So that's part of the pressing with intention is thinking about which way you're going to press it because the next step matters to that. Okay. How about you guys? Does anybody want to see something? You see me do something? I was going to show your little log cabin block that you take the shows and then dial them away. It's up on top of that shelf up there. Because that would be great to show. See that pile of batik box? It's in that box that's next to it. Yeah, I have a log cabin quilt that I've been working on for a minute now. Okay, what's your question? If you, it's on that block. So this? Yes. So you said that these are different sizes, but mm -hmm. I think I heard you say we can cut these at the same time? You can make this as a strip set. So um, if you look at this as an element, oh, I see. So, okay. you would cut, instead of cutting a four inch, uh, three by four inch square, you would cut a four inch strip. Oh, and a three inch strip and a four inch strip, okay. put them together and then cut them apart. Gotcha. Okay. As long as your block is less than 10 inches, you can use this ruler to trim it down. Okay. This block technically is 10 and a half, okay. which is why I didn't do it that way. Okay. But, okay. Um, but yeah, you can, you just, instead of cutting three squares, you're going to cut three strips exactly. and you're going to put them together exactly. like that. Okay. Yeah. So you. like for instance, this invaders pattern that I talked about, without showing the pattern off because I don't own the rights to this pattern. There is, I'm just gonna show you one of the pictures. In the picture here, so here's a picture of part of the little Space Invader dude, right? So instead of cutting this as a square and this as a square, I cut this as a strip and this as a strip. Sewed the whole strips together and then cut these apart I did the same thing here. I cut this as a strip and this is a strip and this is a strip, sewed them all together, cut them apart and then sewed the piece to the top. And then like, here's a four patch. So instead of sewing four squares together, I sewed two strips together, chopped them and flipped them. 
If Angie so. can find a shortcut, as long as the end result is the right way, she will do it as often as she can. Every time. Yep. And then show off your. So point there. this is an example. Uh, yeah, this is the, this is the kind of perfection that you can get with a block lock ruler. This isn't this is the right size ruler, but this is a quarter inch finished log, and this is a three eighths inch finished log. But all you do, and this isn't the right size ruler because this is a one inch and a half inch. You sew your strip on, you lock onto the side of your strip, and then you trim it down. But see how they're all pressed in the same direction? So literally, and I know this sounds bonkers, but I work on this when I don't want to think. Imagine that. I know. So, because all I do is sew a strip on, and it's, I don't even have to cut the strip straight. It's a hot mess. And you can see how much I've handled this block. It's all frayed. Um, I sew a strip on, I press it out. You all, whatever you sew on, you always press it out. And then I just cut the edges off. So this quilt right here, this one is the one that I'm currently working on. So what I did with this is I'm making, uh, I don't know, eight, 13, four, 13 different colors and eight blocks from that. So however many pieces that is, I'm just sewing them all onto a strip, cutting them apart and then trimming them down as I go. But see how perfect this is? So this gives you a half inch and this gives you a one inch finished log and they come out perfect. And I'm even working with shot cottons and we all know how that stuff stretches and frays and does all kinds of weird stuff and look how perfect it is. I love shot cottons. I just have ways of working around them. So, okay. Does anybody else have a question? I do. What you got? For that pineapple roller, what is the most common size you use? For the log cabin? For the, log the half inch, one inch yeah. usually, which is this size here. Because most patterns that you buy, and here's the other thing. I will open every pattern that I buy and figure out which block lock ruler I'm going to use for it. Whether it calls for a block lock ruler or not, I open the pattern and go, oh, it's making half square triangles. This is the ruler I need. Oh, it's got flying geese. This is the ruler I need. Oh, I'm going to do strip sets. I need a log cabin. Oh, it's whatever it is. Most of the time, I can open a pattern and figure out which block lock ruler it is. And I tell my customers all the time, if you buy a pattern and you don't know, bring it to me and I'll figure it out for you. Because it, you know. Because I get this level of accuracy and speed. I am impatient. I want it done. I want it done right. And I want it done fast. And if I can get fast and right, I will pay anything for that. Right? So I used to have a Venn diagram on my desk that says you, you pick two. You can get it fast. You can get it good. Or you can get it cheap. And you can only pick two. <laughs> I want it good. I want it fast. And I'm willing to pay for it. So. Um, that's, that's why I will always go this direction because I get this level of accuracy. Look at how those line up. Plus block lock rulers are just fun to use because they're so unique. They're fun to use. And once you get into the muscle memory and the habit of doing the thing, you don't have to think about it after that. Like when I make half square triangles, I make them eight at a time. I cut them, I sew them, mark them all, sew them all, cut them all, press them all, trim them all down. So I automate everything too. And that's why you get this kind of accuracy. It's really, really amazing. All right. So on that note, if nobody has any more questions, we are going to set up our classroom. And um, you are welcome to stay on the live if you like. Uh, if you have a question, you can pop it in the chat. Somebody will check the chat periodically. Um, if you if the idea of watching other people take some, take a class makes you go um, why then you don't have to do that but we will be doing this every couple of months Let me turn this around mm -hmm. we will be doing this every couple of months and we'll be doing it this way so you can participate in the lecture if you like on YouTube um, what what do you need to do we want to do a wide view of the room while we do the class. I think it's well, I don't know. I haven't figured that out yet. But is that okay where I'm at and where I have it? Um, to your face. Oh, there's my face. So this is the I'll this is an face. example of how we're going to do this. Hopefully we'll work out any bugs. Um, I'm trying really hard to bring my classes to more people in this way. But obviously my, my focus is on the people who are physically in the class learning how to do the things. So we will maneuver this around. If you have a question, pop it in the chat. We will try to get there for you. If you just want to hang out and watch, you can do that too. All right. So enjoy your Saturday. Okay. So we could probably clean all this up and then 
I'm going to pull it back just so there's well, a we can view of we room. can move it all the way back here, and I'm just going to clean all this up. Oh, here, Donna, here's your credit. Thank you. <laughs> And I'm just going to chunk all of that. And I'm honestly, in, in the slow times of the class in between, I'm going to keep working on these blocks so you guys can see how this works too. And I'll be in charge of checking messages. How's and that? refreshments. Oh, we're doing that? No, we're just talking about my refreshments. <laughs> oh. Can you zoom on this camera? No, it's just a webcam. Okay, so that thing works really good. Can we can we get a better quality one of those? Maybe better picture and does zoom. Well, what I want to do is figure out if there's a way that I can do two and have one that's closer and one that's further away. But I don't know if I can do that in the the platform the way that it is. Because that's small and it's great. But once we finish making all of the other videos, like when, once we make the other like actual videos, we can just link back to the video that's a close up of that thing happening. And then we can link that in the comments. Because hopefully the plan is that hopefully once the live is over, Madison can rip out stuff that she wants from it and uh, clean it up. So this is actually recording, it's not just- Theoretically. Um, so I did learn something. What'd you learn? We are not using a plastic table again. Oh, is it shaky? Okay. Yeah. Because it, that does not have any sort of a no stabilizer. Stabilizer in it. Um, All right, you guys. I gotta use the bathroom. Everybody got power. Does everybody have what they need? We're gonna move the iron over to this table, and then we're gonna first thing we're gonna talk about is cutting your strips, um, and then we're gonna talk about. My plan, so my plan for this class is that we make two elements. We're going to make this center block here, and we're going to make this side block over here. Because if you make these two blocks, you can make the rest of the foot. Because if you look at this block, it's just this corner and this corner. So these are easier. So if we'll do both of these two. I'm going to give you some tips on using templates, how to make the template line up. Um, I always tell people that the reason that I can teach quilting is because I have taken lots and lots and lots of quilting classes from lots and lots and lots of different people who do things very differently. And um, honestly, the way that I do template cutting is because of the way Janet taught me to do template cutting in this pattern. So that's, that's the thing. So I'm going to leave this in the middle of the pressing board. Um, there's little trash bins on everybody's table for scraps or whatever. And then we'll just chuck those at the end. Um, there's coffee downstairs. If anybody needs coffee, we're happy to make more coffee. Because coffee is the thing that makes quilts possible. Did you see how cute this is? Did you pick up all the fabric for this one? That's really cute. And it, this is a really quick, easy quilt if you need a baby quilt, like in an afternoon. It's definitely one you can do that fast. You like it. <laughs> you wouldn't be friends with you wouldn't be friends with her if you didn't like a little bit of abuse. This is physical abuse. Oh, that part you're on your own. You can fight that. have one I have some you need a ruler that you like to cut strips with and then you need a square ruler so everybody got those things um something to cut strips with a ruler to cut strips with and then a square up ruler that's at least four and a half inches 
It can be bigger or smaller, but just something that's at least four inches. Well, my broken ruler. My dad you can just chop it down. Dad made me a five by ten. <laughs> hey, look at that! So it's perfect. Nice. I said I'm not yeah, throwing it perfect. away. Okay. And that's perfect for cutting your strips. Okay. If it's on my supply list, I sell it outside of a Sharpie marker. Oh, okay. But I do have some. But I have some. I've got extras. What are you doing first? First, we're going to get our fabrics out. We're going to cut, start cutting some strips. I had everybody bring 10 fat quarters because I thought fat quarters were easier to manage. I want you to take one of your fat quarters out of the pack, whichever one you want this square to be. So see how that purple square is consistent? So just pick one. Personally, I would make it be something that's got a bit of contrast to it. If did everybody did anybody bring a dark background instead of a light one? Well, I was going to use this. Oh, cool. So it's light. So here's the thing with this pattern: you want to make sure that you have good contrast between your background and every one of your fabrics. It doesn't matter. So, like Rachel was in here yesterday, and I am already so in love with her pattern. She's using this mustard yellow as her background. Oh, wow. And then all of her colors are like purples and peaches. and yep. So it doesn't necessarily have to be white or black. You just have to have contrast. She has contrast between every one of her colors, see? So that's really what you need. You need a lighter or dark background. Should I use something else? No, I think that's fine because you've got good contrast with everything. Like. This is the darkest fabric you have. I think that's okay. I, I probably wouldn't use this as your square. Okay. This would probably be uh, look, awesome. you've got plenty of contrast there. Okay. So I would just pick one fabric and put one fabric to the side that you want your squares to be. Doesn't matter. So which this one. is the one I want for that. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So so this one makes you that. It'll be in the middle. She you know, I just haven't made this one before with prints. So yeah, I think it's going to be cool. Yeah, it's okay. This is just practice. It's, and it's just practice. And if you, I don't like it, I'll just. If you don't like yeah. I, anytime I take a class, especially a technique class that I'm not sure if I'm going to dig it, <laughs> I don't go in deep. Because there's been times that I've walked out of class going, yeah, I ain't even finished in the sample. <laughs> um, but most of the time, I do, and I really feel like this quilt, you guys are going to dig it. Um, so when Rachel came in yesterday to get all her fabric and stuff, she was like, oh, no, I already know that I'm going to make this into a quilt because I really want this pattern. So she bought enough stuff to do a whole quilt. Let me make sure I've got this one in. And you guys still have time to set up and everything because we won't start the class class until like 11. And here's the other thing about the class. We're going to make these two blocks. After we make these two blocks, you're welcome to stay and sit here and sew until 4 o'clock and work on whatever, however many blocks you want to work on. Um, that's fine. But for some of us, it's going to take us the whole time to make the two blocks, and that's okay. But if you want to get prepped, you can start prepping your fat or pressing your fabric. Um, I'm going to need a bigger cutting. Space. I've got a mat over there if you want to take that one. Okay. I'll put it right there if you want. I might use that then. Or I have this one too. I'm not going to use this one now. That'll clash with your Yeah, I've got a blue one, but I don't want to pick that up. I can do this if anybody needs it. Yeah, it's Ask Rebecca where the pink mats are. She'll grab it for you. I think that's what I want. So, can I? I like this cake. Yeah, go ahead. I saw it on the shelf. <laughs> Jack, make... Jackie says she's sitting in the middle of a cornfield in, in um, Illinois, but she can hear us. So hey, Jackie. Hi, Jackie. Jackie, Jackie, Jackie. Jackie, Jackie, Jackie. Um, Sandra asked 
if I can define what a background fabric. So if, if you're talking background, the big thing about background is you want contrast. So for instance, the picture on the pattern, she has a white background. Um, if you're nervous about color and you are concerned about how your colors are going to play out, stick with white. If you don't like solids, I don't usually like solids. Um, I use a white on white. So like that's what I did in my sample piece here. This is just a white on white fabric. If you can see the print in there. See that, see that little design? So if you don't like solids, and a lot of people don't like to work with solids, and I respect that, um, then get a white on white. Same thing here. That's what I'm using in my teeny tiny log cabin. See how the, that is a white on white there? So that gives you some contrast, okay? Um, background, the secret to background. When your pattern calls for a background, somebody asked me this yesterday, what's the difference between background and back end? Background is what is allowing your design to pop. It's on the front. Your backing is the back of your quilt. So if you're looking at the back of your pattern and you're picking out your stuff, your backing is always your back. Your background is what is the, um, think of it like the, um, the mat board in your frame. It's the thing that makes your picture pop, right? So when you're choosing a background, make sure you have contrast. Trying to see if I have another quilt around here that I can show the background. Can you see the red quilt in there? So this one, see that red and white quilt over there? The white is the background. That quilt right there with the stars on it. See, where's my finger? That gray quilt right there, the gray is the background. The ombre quilt next to it, the cream is the background. So the background that you have is what makes your project pop. Okay, does that does that make sense? Sandra, did that answer your question? Oh, um, I like that. That, um, uh, a salad with um, buffalo chicken. So Jackie's in there. I don't know if she's sewing with us or if she's just hanging out. Sandra asked a couple of questions. Field, over there. Yeah, she's in the middle of the cornfield. So if there's things that pop up, just yell at me. Oh. Yep, or I'll answer it if I can. I didn't bring it. I left my other iron at home. Let me, yes, let me find it. I took my other iron home and I forgot to bring it back, but I didn't want to. Yeah. I feel like this is 
have more skin in it. Yeah, she doesn't say that. I don't even know. It's just basic, well, she has basic sewing supplies, piece of dress, rubbery cutter, strip cutting ruler, cutting mat, which means she can strip cutting ruler. Cloth. So, the, Sorry, guys, I'm going to shake it up a little bit here. He's trying to make sure more of us get in that. This camera don't have that feature. Oh. <laughs> Doesn't have what feature? Make me skinnier. Oh yeah. <laughs> Is it a wide angle in? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you good guy, baby. Oh, I. You skinny spell. I called him scratching his ear. I'm like, here, let's stop scratching the ear. He'll scratch a little bit. Though. Yeah. Let's go get that ear story again. I didn't think about that either. What? Well, I didn't get home until later. So <laughs> we heard. <laughs> what? What did y'all hear? Nothing. You have. Karen. Karen was talking talking uh, shade last night. Oh yeah. No, she wasn't. Yeah, not she at all. She might not remember. What? Anastasia is asking if uh, she gets what? to walk rock. The strip set ruler from us oh, does it come with instructions? Yeah, that's no, that's why we're doing these. Yeah. Um, it doesn't, um, which is why we're trying to make these videos for people so that it's easier to understand. Yeah, and we're, we're getting ready to do a complete series of videos how to use all the block lock video or rulers. So stay tuned for those. We're starting those this next coming week. We have some already, and if you look up that um, Invaders quilt, there's some tips on there. I also used it in my Traverse quilt. Let go. Oh, there's probably too many irons plugged into the one cord. Can you can you remedy that, babe? Just push that middle button. It's just going to keep doing it though, because if you put too many irons in the same strip, it'll it'll kick it off. Are you loving your big iron, Donna? Yes. Isn't that thing amazing? Pretty sure I'm going to put one up here for permanent. Because now DJ is in love with that iron too, so I think I might put one up here in the classroom. Well, yeah. Today would be a good day. Yeah, I got an extra one, but that iron that's sitting there belongs to somebody, and I I thought it was Jennifer, but it's not. Oh, that's right. She has the big one. Maybe that's why I thought it was her. You're going to cut one and three quarter inch strips for everything except for, um, yeah, for the, the angled squares. I was trying to figure out with my ombre fabric, I might have to do smaller pieces. Why? I think that would be pretty. 
Y'all sound like me going to a class. some extras too. I try to be more um over prepared. Prepared. I just I have a stigma That won't work as well on the plastic. Yeah. Yeah. Sandra the increments on the ruler go all the way down to um, an eighth of an inch. See those teeny tiny lines up there? They go down to an eighth of an inch. Yeah, Jackie, I'm with you on the paper. Like, it's an interesting technique, but if I have the choice to make half square triangle, the only way I'm ever going to make a half square triangle is with the block block rulers. Because they come out perfect. I know. Look at how different their quilts are. So remember I showed you Rachel's um, yellow background, and then Donna's got all her earth bones, because you can tell by her outfit that that's her movie. <laughs> Another Donna. Another Donna. Oh, yeah. Donna and Donna. Yes. Donna, sorry. Yeah, normally I do introduction thing. Yeah. Yeah, normally I make you guys introduce yourselves. You guys know each other. Um, Rachel and Donna and Megan and Susan. And then Donna and Jennifer and Karen. There we go. Now y'all know each other. Look at me. Ooh. I have Is two, that Robert? I have two of them. Probably, I don't know. Benefits. No, Carol, I am. That's great. I wasn't overthinking. I can't help it. It's just a Don't overthink it. It's all okay. And with those ombres, it doesn't even matter. I know. It's all just going to That's why I'm thinking I may do more than the things. I like yours too. 
it is going to be gorgeous. Like two colors, I may add more, like for the bigger pieces. Well, you're going to have one piece that has eight in it. Yeah. So you're going to mix them up anyway. Yeah. Um, that's why I don't give you all like super solid, like hardcore instructions on fabric choices. Yep. Because I'm always really keen on what you pick and which one. So. I yeah. think it's funny how okay. most small. people they don't pick like anywhere close to the same stuff. Either. No, and that's why everybody walks out of here with stuff that looks completely different. So, like technically, technically speaking, <laughs> other than you two, which we helped you pick out your fabric, I think Donna's the only one that did the two tone thing. Or Jennifer did the two tone thing. Too. Perfect. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so we've got one fabric that we're going to put to the side, and then the other fabric we're going to cut strips with. Which Keep in mind, to the side? for the, we're just not, we're not going to cut strips out of it, we're going to cut squares out of it. Which is that one? It's the one that makes, where my block go? Make sure for, where's your block? Where's my block? Oh, right there. I was going to say it was a little bit Oh. Yeah. So if I want to be this, okay. I got eight guys. Yeah. And that's how the pattern is written. I didn't do it that way. I did it scrappy. But um, so this, here's your block, y'all. So this block here and these here are made out of, they can be, I made mine scrappy, but in the pattern, this block and these here are going to be the same fabric. So whatever you're putting to the side is going to be whatever you want to be out here. Okay. So, like, <laughs> can I use this for a little bit? Sure, you can use anything you want. I'm just like, 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 I'm just Blocks or squares or whatever out of the background, and one fabric that you're going to put off to the side. Okay, and just just press enough for the for what we're going to do today. And I know I put a crappy iron out here, but that will make you appreciate my good iron. The one for the corner. Oh, you were the other one that wanted no. You wanted the rotate rotating that, which I ordered, and it was back ordered. I should be having that soon. I was going to say, somebody else ordered one of those big ironing stations, and I don't remember who it was. What's a big ironing station? I think I, we, so, so we had it out here that we want to see. Yeah. <laughs> we had it out at the last retreat, oh, and I yeah. sold like three of them. Oh, yeah. Because once uh, we used it, it was like, um, they're awesome. Oh, it's yeah. amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. You, will, you will want one. What is it? This iron. It's an iron. It holds like a gallon iron. of water and makes a crap ton of steam. Um, and I just didn't want to open it because somebody else ordered one, and I have that one there, and I just I, I just need to look up. If they just came in, um, and yeah, well, I mean, I have this one. That's why I wasn't. I can open it. And we can use it in the class if somebody wants it. But I'm gonna put one in. They're like three hundred bucks. Um, they're worth it. They're so worth it. Oh, it's 260. It's not ridiculous. Okay. I have the step down one that has a smaller, smaller bucket. Reservoir. Yeah. But it still works. Some of you have a reservoir in there. Mm -hmm. And I need to, um, before we set the iron up, I need to like soak the filter and all that stuff. But I was going to put one in the classroom anyway. I just didn't want to open this one because I thought somebody had already ordered it. But I just checked inventory and it's getting it. But every time I open one and you put it out, somebody else is taking it home. So Donna took the last one home. Yep. She is a sexy iron. She sure is. Did you answer any of these questions, babe? Um, a couple of them. Uh, how you about a for a triangle. If there's anything after that, I don't know. Uh, Jackie said Jacob misses us. Aw, Jacob Tell needs him to come, come back. Yes, Jacob needs to come back. Tell him he needs to come drink yours with us again. Tell right. Jackie she needs to go ahead and move. Yeah. She's really She's trying. She's trying. <laughs> <laughs> she texted me pictures of some houses like this yesterday. But 
But every time you find a house she likes, it's already got an offer on it. Of course, of course. Are they still like that? I thought we were moving up. Yeah, we were moving up. Yeah, it's really cool. That looks amazing. This thing. Is it just for clothing or can you? No. Probably. Does it steam too? Oh, oh my God. God. It's, it's amazing. amazing. So you can stand it and steam it. Steam it. You can steam it. Steam. 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 You haven't gotten started yet? No, we're still ironing. Yeah. Four hundred and ten. I asked what we need to do. She's going to use it. If that one is going to be an extra. I mean, that's how you sell them. If you have more out to be used. Yeah. Exactly. That's how they did it in Ireland, Ohio. When we had it out, we all bought it. I mean, I still would have bought it if you hadn't seen it. If I hadn't. You said what you bought? Whole weekend, yep. And you can, like, bought the model in the steamer? Yep. She bought the one we used during the retreat. Sure did. Sure did. That's all. Uh, there's. Oh, it's, it's. They keep turning off. And yeah, it's turning. It's not. It's still on. Okay. Yeah. I just had it. Yeah. Yeah. Is it still on? Instead of a fat quarter. Yeah, I was only going to iron these back quarters for right now. And maybe if you cut those a little bit. That's why I'm cutting these in half. I'm like, I'm going to do it. You know, the whole quarter yard. No, I just went home. She got sidetracked sitting on my back of the house. We got that. I love mine in the car. That's probably just. All right, so hot tip with those irons. First thing you got to do is take the filter out and soak it in water. And you just soak it for a few minutes. Or else it makes a funny body sound. What is this that you're soaking? The filter. It wasn't iron. It's also filter. Yeah, kind of. It's got sand in it. You fill this with water mm -hmm. uh, throughout the reservoir. Yep. And it just um, makes lots of steam for a long time. What kind of water are you? I put um, just drinking water because we've got a lot of chlorine in our because city water. When I had well water, I just put water from the well city. No. Honestly, you're not even supposed to have to put filtered water in it. That's what the filter's for. But I find that since the water sits in this for a while and since we have city water, it gets a little more. I know, that's what they said. It is on. We need, what I said was, we need to have more than one cord that the iron's going to. Yes. But I don't think he actually did that. And I thought too it would stay on, but it does keep going off too. Yeah. Irons are the biggest suck of energy. Oh yeah, especially when they start kicking on and off. Do you want to put, put that iron on this? The thing is, make sure that y'all are drawing these cords. That is the downfall to this moment here. I wish we had the plugs in the floor, but that was not an option I was given. All right, is everybody comfortable with cutting long strips accurately? Is there anybody that's not? Okay. So we yeah. will, I'll, once we get our fabric laid out, I will show you guys some tips on getting really straight. You ever cut your your strips and you get elbows? Yes. Mm -hmm. so I'll show you how to not have that. Okay. So. 
Like at the fold, right yeah. fold. Yeah. it won't line up straight, but I'm going to show you some tricks to make that be a thing. So, yeah, it's Yep. 
because they go through a hot water bath repeatedly. So you don't have to pre shrink fatigues. They're already shrunk. But fatigues will bleed more than other fabrics because they're hand bent. Okay? So if you rip both ends, so now I've ripped that and it's straight both sides, right? I only rip one side of this. Look at our other side. You are losing fabric when you cut to help the bolts. Yeah, because you're going to try to trim that off anyway. Right. You're going to trim it anyway. You always want to sew together two breast or two cut pieces of fabric. So the, so the fight back that I get all the time is, well, now it's all wonky on the edge. Okay, well, we have quilters, so you know what we have access to? An iron. Right. There, problem solved. Okay? So now I have two pieces of fabric that are perfectly straight. I'm still going to clean it up anyway because I want to have a perfectly straight. Can you do that long for a second? I still want to have a perfectly straight piece over here. And, you know, there's a little bit of threads and whatever. When I talk about the, the holy trinity of quilting, right? Cutting straight is the first step. If you don't cut it straight, you're not going to sew it straight. Don't distract. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So now this is straight. My fold is relatively straight. And since you guys have yardage, I'm going to show you guys a trick with yardage too. All right. So my folds are lined up straight as well. My, my, um, Selvage is from here, and that's okay. So the first thing I'm going to do, that one over there is ambidextrous, so he can cut both sides of the ruler. I can the same time there. So I'm going to take my ruler. I'm going to line my line up on my fold. But that's because this is already straight. But you're, you're going to cut it anyway? I'm going to cut it anyway. Right. You're getting elbows because, one, you're lining up your selvage. So when we take a piece of fabric and we fold it, what we do, and what a lot of people that teach on YouTube tell you to do, is take your ends, fold them together, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What we just talk about our selvages. They're dry. Right. They're dry. Yeah. I mean, look at this. I don't right. Never rely on your drunk friend to get you home, right? <laughs> so if you line your... <laughs> what if you're a drunker? Yeah. <laughs> then both your asses should be walking. <laughs> Okay, okay all in a So see how, see how the bottom's not straight? I'm going to show you with the yard fabric because it is really obvious. Don't line up these parts up here. Do you want, do you line want this up big here? piece? Do you I have I will. I, have, I will in a second. I have, I have, I have yardage, though. Right. Yeah, I have a yardage. Right. Don't, don't use your selvage as a basis for anything ever. Okay? Just remember your selvage is drunk and let it dry out. Okay? okay. So we've got, this is straight. We've got our line on our fold. So we're going to line up our line on our fold and we're going to clean up this side. There's not much to get rid of because it's already straight. Now, because I can't cut both ways, I'm going to flip it or you can rotate your mat. For this pattern, we're going to cut one and three quarter inch strips. You could if you want to use a log cabin. I was going to say with the log cabin room. You want to use a log cabin to it down, you could. You wouldn't have to measure any of this. But um, the reason I like the quilter select rulers is because the solid lines are really easy to see, mm -hmm. but so are the quarter inch lines. So when I put this down on here and I line up my solid line on my fold, my one and three quarter line is right there. So now, since I started with a straight line and this is straight, <laughs> I'm going to line my quarter inch. You see how my quarter inch line is hit right there along that edge? So now when I put my strips and I open this up, how many of those are no elbows? It don't have no elbow. So are all the strips for cutting the same size so we could go No, through. there's don't, yeah, you don't need to cut them all up. What I would do for this point is I'd probably cut two strips of every color in one and three quarter. You are going to cut some two and three quarters to do those side points. Okay, so if you want to, if you want to be really prepared, you could cut two that's one and three quarters and one that's two and three quarters of every color. One and three quarters and two and three quarters. You have to write this down. Well, it's in your pattern. So the other thing I really like in her patterns is she gives you the cutting pieces all at once. I cut everything.
big ones. Yeah. And then I label it. But you're gonna, yeah, so you're gonna have in your, here's your background color, here's your paint, which is your, your quarter pieces, your squares. So you're gonna do one and three quarters and two and three quarters. Okay. But you only need one of the two and three quarters, okay? So go ahead and pull out all of your, you're gonna set one thing aside to make squares with. How many of these? Well, that's for the whole quilt, but for the, for the purpose of the class, we're gonna cut two, one and three quarters, and one, two and three quarters. Of every color. Of every color, yes. except for the one that you're doing your squares. Okay. If it's not one, if it's not, they're kind of, they're not going to right? You do it the same way. You're just going to snip into your selvage. So selvages are easier to see on printed fabric because they're yeah. fuzzy. Snip into the selvage. Rip it away from you. Okay. You'll get a straighter rip. Okay. If you rip it side to side, it's just a little bit more wonky. Um, and I don't have to do two. No, just whatever side you rip, use that one to cut. I like that better. When, when you're doing the ripping thing, I always like to use the analogy of an episiotomy. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Don't remind me. Yeah, don't remind right? me. And, that, and that's why we normally have women in class, and so they get the whole thing. If you, if you cut the fabric and then you rip it, it rips a whole lot easier, right? Like an episiotomy. So <laughs> if you pull it away from you, you're separating the, the fibers. If you pull it side to side, you're distorting them. Okay? So just remember that you're trying to split your, your fiber down one frame. So this way, I get cut the one piece. Yeah, you're good. And that's how you know. So here's another tip. If you snip into one end and it rips off and it breaks, snip the other end. Usually that works. Sometimes you just have to do it a couple of times. Y'all gonna make me do hair stand up. He hates the sound of ripping fabric. I'm doing research to keep my mind focused. No, you're not. <laughs> no, I really what are you doing? If I wasn't ripping along with everybody else, I would have this I'm not trying to go down all that. Oh, yeah, no, um, that's a half It's made for doing rushes and fires. We can figure that out for the next one. No, I'm just saying. But this, but this isn't meant to be a class. But I would actually, though, that would be nice. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 All right, so let's get to the point where we have a oh, yeah. color. <laughs> Look how bad that one's off. I know, it's crazy, right? Just remember yourself is your drunk. They are your untrustworthy drunk friend. Do we all you have, have one? Tell and Ginger she needs to do this every time she starts. On. But here's the, here's the thing about ripping fabric. People are super opinionated about it. Oh yeah, yeah. 108 is excellent. Oh, I it is way off. It is the only fabric in the store that I don't care what your opinion is. I'm ripping it off the bowl. Yep. Because it has a longer term. As a long term, if you bring me a ripped wash backing, you are my favorite yeah. customer. And I can show you the difference when I put it on the long arm. Um, oh wow. But again, I used to be the same way. I was like, I don't want to rip fabric because it's all messed up. I took a class one time with this woman who taught me so much about how fabric is made. Yep. And she demoed, she demoed the ripping just like I did for you, and, and that's all it took for me to be a convert. It's like, okay, I get it. She also was the one who convinced me to wash my fabric before I use it because of science. But I only do that if I have yardage. If you don't have yardage, then you need to at least pre shrink your fabric. And you can do that with steam and stuff. I got my friends all the little half gallon sprayers from Harbor, Harbor Freight. 
to mix our starch where we can. Yeah, I use that on, on my long arm because I, I, if you bring me a really, really vacuum, yeah. I load it on the on the rollers and spray it, yep. and then roll it up. Yep. But shrinkage is real. Um, you don't have shrinkage so much with the teeth because, like I said, they've already gone through hot water multiple times. But shrinkage with cotton fabric is just science. And the cheaper the fabric, the poorer quality the fabric, the more it's going to shrink. Because when you buy fabric from a craft store, they put extra sizing in the fabric so that it looks like something you want to buy. The sizing fills in the cracks between the thread, and then when you wash the sizing out, it shrinks even more. But even good, and the whole a whole idea that full cut quality fabric doesn't shrink is not true either. Full cut quality fabric still shrinks three to five percent. So if you have a wide back and it's 108 inches wide and it shrinks five percent, you lost six inches off your back. It also won't be frayed. See how there's threads over here? Uh -huh. See how there's not over here? Uh -huh. That's because that's a woven edge. So that's your selling. Okay. Okay. And part of the reason I teach you, I teach this in a lot of my classes at the beginning because a lot of people just don't know it. And if you and you have to see it. I can say it all day long, but you have to see it. And if it rips off one side, you can cut it on the other side. Like you get it breaks off. Yeah. Oh, well, I can just Okay. It's not enough to matter because let me, let me show you. If you, I mean, it's really small, but once you start it, but do you see how this is not, this is also raw fabric? Yeah. You didn't actually cut it. We got three quarters and one piece. I mean, this is a totally usable piece. Yeah. Okay, good. I that. That should be able to put that out of all of So, we're going to want one of these. Yeah. Like, it's already. Oh, yeah, that can tell me. Oh, you're in line with that one? It's already. So, when I line this line up here, <laughs> see how this isn't quite exactly yeah. right? I ripped so I lined that up here. See how it's off just a little bit? Okay. Yeah, so just straighten your edge on the edge. So line up your fold right there. And I always put my mat kind of on the corner of my table because okay. then I can cut both sides without actually cutting four feet. Okay. And you know what? No, it just seems like there might be two in there. Oh. So now when I slide this over, see how that's straight and that's straight? Okay. Yeah, but it makes a really weird mess. See how you're not coming out. So think of it like a um well, I probably measured the wrong side because of the, the all trim. But see how it's straight? Yeah. Um, think of it like a T frame. That you're lining up the fold line and the and the measure line. That's the way you look well. I can let you use mine. You can see like it. But always, you always line up the line down here and the line. And see how that slid just a little bit? Yeah. It makes a big difference. So, but you're still going to do it. Okay? You're welcome. So, how do you get it? And I know that it, it goes against the quilter's nature to throw fabric away, but 
it's better to throw away a little bit of fabric and get perfection than to fight with it. Um, I'm all about throwing away a quarter inch of fabric if it's straight. Are you are you picking up lunch or is she bringing it? That's I texted her about that. I'm not sure. Probably should go get it because she's working. Hi there, buggies. Are you helping? The camera is awesome. Are you helping? It's just gonna help everybody learn. Mm -hmm. He's like, no, I'm gonna sit on her bed's feet. See what's up. My job's for cute. Class, I slept through. So. Oh my god, I love science. I, I hated school though. I hated every class. Except for, still doesn't ex except for playtime. Well, yeah, me too. Playtime and uh, lunch. Recess. Recess, yes, recess. Both sides. Can you ask for another one? So, your favorite class. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. So, Rachel just asked if there's a right or wrong side of the piece. Quality batiks do not have a right side because they're like uh, tie dye. They're dyed all the way through. Hot tip: If you pick up some batik that you don't know where it came from and you flip it over and it looks different on the other side, yep, don't use it because it's probably a uh, craft store batik. Which means it came from China. Well, it just means that it wasn't printed on. So batiks aren't printed; they're hand dyed. And the um, this is another one of those things that people get weird about. Yes, you can put batiks and cotton together because guess what? Batiks are cotton. They're printed on the same gray goods. It's just they feel different because the batiks are already pre-shrunk. They don't have sides in them. Um, All right, when somebody gets, everybody needs to get to where they have two strips because now we're going to make sure we have a good seam allowance. We're going to do the seam allowance test. No, we're not cutting the background in. So how many strips would you cut together and why? Um, me, personally, I cut three or four. But if you're not comfortable with that, do one or two at a time. If you are cutting your strips and you're not getting accurate cuts, then do less. I forgot to uh, have Kristen mention Frogger with this traveling thing. Well, we can work that out. You said you answered those and you answered Sandra. Sandra, actually, the half square triangle is probably the most common block wall ruler. It's the one that most people start with. That's why we call it the gateway ruler. It's the one that gets you hooked on stuff. Yeah, our biggest seller is the six and a half inch half square triangle. Is that steaming yet? Yeah. Okay. It just takes a little while for the yeah. filter to work through. Well, and it was That's over. Why we get it was overfilled too. Oh, so, was it? Yeah, by like an inch. So I had to let some out. It takes it takes a little bit for that filter to
Are we close to having two strips? I'm not saying like so. No, 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 no. Just cut. No, just cut. Because then we're going to talk about our um, getting our quarter inch allowance. So the retreats are just like a party to sew together. Basically. Yes, they are. Yeah. Okay. It happened. And we had a good time. See how see how it's already obviously way off. Yeah. Just start on the other end and we're good. I would say that's nonsense. It's very big drill. So the next one of these classes is going to be the pineapple quilt. Um, I don't have the box because I'm working on that quilt at home. And I is, that, is that that one? Or the one on no, the that's a log. That's a okay. specific kind of log cabin. A pineapple is a type of log cabin, um, but with extra angles. And honestly, I probably should do the log cabin before the pineapple, so I might pick that up. This is what's on my calendar for now, but it's not on my calendar yet. No, my calendar. No. But yeah, it's not out there, it's not out there yet because I haven't entirely decided about it. Regardless, either one would be fun. Yeah, yeah. And now that I'm making this one, I might actually do this one as a option. Because I do the same thing that I'm showing you guys. I make one block first. And then I go and do all the rest of it. Is that so you can only screw up one block instead of the whole quilt? Yeah, basically. <laughs> I was gonna ask why she does it that way because we can just answer the question. Because I want to make sure about the pressing and I want to make sure that I, you know, because I've done that before. Because I'm a big fan of like chain piecing. Uh -huh. So if you if you chain piece your whole quilt and you make the mistake hey. three hundred times, well, you know, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, you have other feelings about it by then. And that's why there's wine. That always messes me up. I can knit and drink wine, but I won't sell and drink wine because knitting you just rip it out and reduce the art. Well, I mean, you do with quilting too. I was going to say, yeah, you still have to rip. Yeah, but I mean, you ruin your fabric. I mean, you know, you cut it off. Yeah, but that's okay. I had a friend one time, I was I was at home quilting. And Calls me and she's like, Hey, what are you doing? I said, No, I'm just I'm working because I was long army at home. She's like, Oh, I said, What? She goes, Well, I was going to come over and I was going to bring a bottle of wine. And, and I was like, Okay. She goes, But you probably not like to drink it, so, right? And I said, Oh, that's cute. Spoken like a non <laughs> yeah. And I was like, No, bring two bottles. <laughs> one for me, one for you. Now, that being said, I have learned that there's certain things I will do after I've been drinking. Like cut with a ruler that's not a quilter select ruler, which is how I lost my fingertip. I, thought Ooh, was yeah. I have a friend that had to go have stitches. I mean, she and she has nerve damage in her finger now. She can't even, you know, make the feeling is close to all. Yeah, and I really don't think it had anything to do with the drinking. I think it was just because I was using a ruler that slipped. Yep. And the ruler slipped, and my rubbery cutter just went right over the ruler and straight through my fingernail. My fingernail is finally back, and that was like three months ago. Wow. The pictures are pretty dirty. I texted you, and I was like, so I've been drinking, and I just cut my finger, and I think you need to come get me. Please come get me. It's like, how bad am I bleeding? I was like, oh, there's a little blood. Will and Lexi know. I got your head No, because they did this like that print in her nail and that was bigger. Oh, my God. A little bit of separation. But like, it was all the way through my ears. These are babies. I don't blame them. So we're going to start doing a lot of traveling and teaching, and we're hoping we can take them with us. Oh, yeah. He's such a good boy. I don't know why you couldn't. Yeah, but other other stores and stuff. Yeah, they well, don't know well, that. He but have, honestly, he's happier staying in the car than he is staying at home by himself. Yeah. Yeah, but that just okay. depends on time of year and the weather and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah my guys love to go fried. 
Lila loves to ride. I've got a remote start on my car now, so I can easily leave my car running. Yeah, we do that too. Like if it's warm out or whatever. Yep. I found out that as long as it's not raining, if it is a hot day and you've got a sunroof, if you park in the shade and open the sunroof, it lets the heat ride out because heat rises. So it will go right out the sunroof. So even if it's up to like 85, as long as you're in the shade, if you've got your four windows, half an hour, and the sunroof will be good. He goes with me to run errands all day, and that's what I do. I park in the shade. Oh, yeah. But if I leave him at home, he's going to do some damage. Oh. Yep. But the sunroof makes a big difference with heat. We're all there. Well, there's no nowhere for the heat to get home. What are you doing? Instead of sitting in the car. There's no way for awesome the heat to get trapped if this escapes. Yeah, there you go. He's got a fucking leg. 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 You know what? I'm, I've got a sheet in mine right now. I found the sheet, the fitted sheets at Walmart on the clearance. I've got the fitted sheet now, but I'm on the flat sheet. But I'm going to put the fitted sheet, mm -hmm. and I'll put holes in it to put, you know, to keep it right. The headrest and on the back of the seat, so it the washer wash it, put it right back in. You know what I use? Yeah, you know what I use because it's more comfortable for them. Right. Is you go to the, uh, the Home Goods, the TJ Maxx Home Goods store, yeah. and I get one of those cheap twin size fleece blankets. Yep. Because they're really cuddly and soft. Yep. And they're 20 bucks. And I use that. I just push it down into the seat. So he, yeah. I've done that, but for ours, the way they like to lay, the backs are really Yeah, so he doesn't get on the back. He doesn't get on the back. Yeah. He just lays down on the flat yeah. spot. But I don't want his they claws. Like to lay they lay my seat. Seat. Yes, they mm -hmm. like to just lay me in the back, and I have fabric seats, so, you know, they oh, just yeah. attract the dog work. All right, are we getting close to sewing something? Does everybody <laughs> have two strips yet? Yes. Okay. So now we're going to talk about, does everybody know how to get a scant quarter inch on their machine? I think oh, it's a scant. Does everybody know the difference between a quarter inch and a scant quarter inch? It's a very big machine. It's not quite a quarter inch. It's very big. It's like three hairs width short of a quarter inch. The reason that matters, and this really only matters, it doesn't matter that much with um, this technique. It matters more with this technique than with some. But when you press your fabric to one side, you've got two layers of fabric and a layer of thread that are taking up space. Because there's just there's matter there, it's taking up space. So to get a truly straight piece, you need to account for that thickness. Okay? Since with block off rulers, we always have to press to the one side, and we talked about why your quilting is going to last longer if you do. We're going to press to one side. So some people use their regular casing foot, some people use a quarter inch piecing foot, some people have a quarter inch piecing foot with a guide. Whatever you like is fine. All right. I personally use my quarter inch piecing book. So, what I want everybody to do is take two pieces that are one and three quarters of an inch and sew them to each other. And then we're going to press them. And then we're going to see how accurate your seam allowance is. So, then, so when you have multiple colors um, and they Range or their opposite, like green and brown, or yeah, brown. Um, when we purple, are we supposed to be sewing within the color family? That's up to you. Okay. So Personally, I would just mix them all together. Okay. But if you wanted to kind of have like an ombre effect, then think about what you're going to sew together. You can do that. But that's up to you. Um, but I don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't overthink it. I would just mix them up. And that's why I had to bring ten colors. Sorry. Um, that's why I had to bring ten colors so you could mix them up. Okay. Okay. So two pieces that are an inch and three quarters, and sew them to each other. The same two or different? Colors? Two different ones. Two different. Mm -hmm. So another question: If you wanted it to not be consistent throughout the whole, if you're making a quilt, um, the, how many? 
I took two strips together now. That's going to be to make one block, or that's going to make multiple blocks. Oh yeah, it's going to make lots of blocks. So yeah, so that's why I, I had you bring it up to do the one block. You can mix it up if, a little bit if you want to. So like, and that's also why I had to make more than one strip. You can sew more than one thing together. So what we're going to make is this right here. And since I only made one set, every one of my twos have that fabric in it. Okay. But you can mix that up. Yes. If you're going to make the whole quilt, make more than one. Then your next strip set, you can do other Okay. We'll get to that, but right now what we really want to figure out is our seam. It doesn't matter. You don't need to trim the selvages off. It doesn't matter that your strips are going to be slightly different lengths. Okay, what we're testing right now is a quarter inch seam. Okay. Okay, so my other foot. Oh, so is that your quarter foot? Oh, that's the one I've been using. Did you get the quarter We're up, my up. Yeah. So, yeah, however you normally sew a quarter inch seam, and honestly, don't do the whole with the fabric, like just cut a chunk off, like cut a six inch chunk off or something. So that you don't have to press the whole thing. This is this right now is just just testing. So like for you people that have yardage, just cut a chunk off. Everybody else that has fat quarters, it's not it's not too bad. Make it a decent sized chunk, like at least a six inch piece. <laughs> oh, we probably will. What time is it? Let's say one. Sandra, these classes are going to be independent. They'll be separate from each other. Um, they're going to be more about the ruler than about the projects. So they're not going to build on each other. There might be ones that I, so I have a couple of projects that use more than one ruler. So if it's something like that where we've already used, say, a kite and a square, and now we're going to add a triangle and a square, then I'll let you know that in the description. So do we press this now, Andrew? Okay. I can do this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you're going to press it like I showed in the demo. Press it open and then press it to one side. Oh, your bottom line. Your bottom line. Oh. Okay. I'm going to have that moment. Okay. We do with more than one. No, right now we're just testing our seam allowance. I kept thinking, I know I pressed the sound. So now we're going to press it, and theoretically, your, your strip should be three inches wide once you press it. And so I'm going to do it open. And you can if you choose to. If you, if you struggle with having that little fold, then press it first and press it open first and then to one side. If you don't get the little fold, they don't, you don't have to worry about that. What little fold? See that? See how that? See that when I pull that apart? Uh -huh. There's just, and it's only in that one spot. It's not in the whole thing. It's just in that one little spot. So if you get that kind of thing, uh -huh. then you might get more accurate. If you might, you might need to do that. I don't need to do that. But if you're getting that effect, I learned that when I was teaching people how to do this in, in Quilters Academy. I had some people that would get the, the fold and some people didn't. Um, and that's when I learned to teach them this way. This is not an Elysium. <laughs> it will stay hot. So again, we go to one touch. Yep. So then, all right, so here's here's the next thing. So now that you have this press open, okay. which side do you care what side it goes to have? So you're going to use the weight of your iron okay. and just press it to one side. I can tell you right now your seam allowance is really thin. So, so this, so your block is probably going to be too wide. Okay. Okay. But this is the point of that trick, of that test. Okay. is to find out which way you need to move your needle. Okay? So now go and measure this. 
and see if it's three okay. inches. It's not three inches. It's got that little end right there. Well, and here's the other reason that you make strip sets instead of sewing one inch squares yeah. together. You come in here, it's small. You just square up that end anyway. So when you're making strip sets, so if you, you ever tried to sew one and a half inch squares together and the first quarter inch is kind of because that's just how it is. If you're only sewing an inch and a half space and the first quarter inch is long, then that's like a quarter of your piece. So mine but if you sew strip sets and the first little bit is weird, who cares? Cut it off. So mine is too small, so that means my means your seam allowance is too wide. So if you're not getting a three inch piece, or let's see. See that? See that fold? That uh -huh. That's where your problem is. So your seam allowance looks okay, well, it's gonna look but it's in the pressing. So now try the thing when you press it open first. And then so here, here's another tip. You ever set your seam? So wow. you set your seam first. I have my, I <laughs> have, an over I have my scan already. I know. Figured I already know what mine is too. In my machine. I know what mine is too because I've messed it up enough to work it out. Yep. So now we're gonna. Here's what I do. It seems like a lot of steps, but you press it. You press it that way. Then press it that way. And then if you still need to, while it's warm, it's easier to maneuver. Press it open. And now I'll measure it. Let's see what it is. Now it's right. So yours was the pressing. Now you're going to want to press it to one side. So while it's like this, just press it to one side. Okay? So mine is larger. So you need to figure out a way to do. I the first one. I came in farther on the rest of them. It's usually easier to measure it than it was that way because it has one. So, yes, see, you're almost an eight inch off. So, you want to have a wider seam allowance than what you're doing. So, how are you getting up to your seam allowance? So, should I start sewing strips? Yes. So, so you're going to need one strip that has two in it and one strip set that has three. Okay? And they're all the one and three quarters. One and three quarters. So, which should be perfect, and your needle is in the one that is ready for the one that is ready for the one So when you're putting your guide down, your fabric should touch the guide. So if you can see light between the guide and your needle, or between the guide and your Bit. See how much wider that is? Okay. So when you're sewing, you want your fabric to run right along that guide. You don't you don't want to see the fabric this side of the guide. So right. Like that's bad. But if you're sewing it like this and you can see a gap, that's probably what I do. You're too far away. So you actually want the guide, think of it like a um like a curb, mm -hmm. and you want to touch the curb. So I should check it now. That's probably what I would do. So let's, and you you should still do it yourself because what I look at and what you look at is different. So like for instance, I can have my foot set up, you can do a quarter inch, and it works perfectly for me. DJ will sit down and he needs to move his knee Yeah. So it's just the way that we do it. So I would just cut that off right there. Okay. And then, and then by pressing it. If you need double your plane, you need it.
is four inches different from mine. No, okay. it's just the way that you hold your body. It's the where you're looking with your eyes, yeah. and that's why it doesn't necessarily matter. That's, that's not. Um, that's why it doesn't matter that much what your machine says it's doing. It matters what you're doing. And your machine is a tool. So depending on how you hold the tool, you make the tool do what you want. Okay. So did that work? I think I have a Did you press it? Huh? Yep. There you go. So Yay. that's the setting you want on your machine. So like targets. Yeah, I'm not going to jump on this. Yeah, because you're going to cut them down into one and three quarters. Okay. But you want to get, so here, here's why I spend so much time doing this. If you're piecing accurately to begin with, then the rest of your stuff is going to go right. So remember what I tell you the Holy Trinity is. Pressing, cutting, pressing. I didn't know this was going to be it. Fast, quarter inch, <laughs> quarter inch seam allowance. So we already talked about cutting, right? We squared up our fabric, we cut our strips. Now we're talking about quarter inch seam allowance. If you can get an accurate quarter inch, then we, and we already talked a little bit about pressing. So those three things are the Holy Trinity of Okay? So that means pressing a quarter inch. So like for instance, here, here's the issues we had so far. Karen's an overachiever, so hers is perfect. Um, <laughs> Susan's seam allowance was too skinny. Megan's pressing was folded over just a little bit. So if you test it, and if you haven't sewn in a little bit, do this every time, not every time, but if you haven't sewn in a little bit, you're not sure what your setting is, just take a couple pieces of fabric and sew them together and test it out. It doesn't take that long, but the accuracy that you get from it is going to make a huge difference. So I've, I've done a half a two set. Now okay, just and then you need a three set. And I'm doing a half a three set. And remember we talked about when you start doing multiple sets, make sure you're pressing in the same direction. Okay. Does everybody know the secret about pressing your seam or setting your seams? Are we gonna trim it down? Yeah, see, this is that little thing. Yeah, I mean, it's okay, but I did do that. So, these are at least the irons. So, if you set the seam first, set the seam first, then, all right, let me show you the feel that. See how the thread disappears into the fiber? Yes. You set your seam first, it just sort of sinks it down in there. Then press it to one side, like this. Some people can get there with just this button. You don't have to press it open. You decide. Okay. See how I don't have the fold? Yes. If it's still folded over, though, then flip it over and press it open. Okay. And the, what happens is now, since it's warm, it's really easy to press it open. Now measure it. See what it looks like. I would do it the other way. It's a three inch ruler, but you know. So now you've tested it, you know it works. Now you're going to flip it over and you're going to press your button here. Okay? This is just, this is the scientific theory, right? So. So your seam allowance is probably too wide. Yeah, because your pressing looks really good. The first one was right. Uh, and again, if you, if you have, if this doesn't have any holes in it, like if you can't see a hole. Well, I put my needle back. I put my needle back to um, center. And now, and now it's too small. Yeah, I was just testing. So that just that one little needle bump, look, yep. it's almost an eighth of an inch difference. Yep. So that's just one of those little things that I teach my people. I put my I put my quarter inch foot on and I bump my needle over one to the right. That's what I usually Now my luminaire lets you bump half millimeters. Oh, wow. So I bump it twice with my luminaire. But on most machines it bumps like like a or it's a quarter millimeter. My luminaire is so precise that it will bump a quarter millimeter. Wow. So uh, well, like a half millimeter is what you want. And that's that's really the only difference. But it it makes a big difference. Like it's a it's a dumb little thing that doesn't seem to matter. 
And it doesn't matter that much when you're sewing squares together, but when you start doing triangles and you start doing things with points, that's where it really matters. Does anybody have questions so far? Three strips. What is it supposed to be? So one and three quarters times three is what? Three and a half. Four and a half. Three and a half. Three and a half. Three, four, three and a half, four and three quarters. Yeah. So that means if you, so if, okay, so here's how you do the math. So three times one and three quarters is four and three quarters, right? Is that right? Some math person help me. Well, what's the one who lives me either? One and three quarters times three. Uh, well, one and three quarters, one and three quarters. Four and three and a half. So it's like, That's a half and a half. So it should be five and a quarter. Should be what you get. Now, how many seams do you have? So one and three quarters times three is five and a quarter, yes, yes. right? How many seams you got? Two. So if you lose a half an inch for every seam, could you do, right? Quarter inch, quarter inch. So you use a half inch, you lose a half an inch for every seam, yes? So how big should your strip set be? Four and a quarter. But if you've got your seam allowance right on the first one, then this should be fine. So yeah, every time you sew a seam, you're going to use a half an inch. Okay. Your seam will go Okay, so Donna's got a twofer and she's got a threefer. So we're going to do the first element once we get to here. Now, after you, have, and you guys, have, once you get to where you understand this part, you just keep adding to it and just make it bigger. So at one point, to make this part of the block right here, we're going to have eight. So this is just a strip set of eight. So what we made so far is a strip set of two and a strip set of three, so we're gonna make this block right here. Okay. Okay? So now is where you get to use your Faith's new ruler. Okay? So now we're gonna get our strip set ruler out. Now to make this one block, to make this one block, we need to make this element, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. So you're going to cut eight of the two first and the three first. Okay, does that make sense? And remember we talked about how to cut with the ruler. If anybody wants me to show again how that works. Well, you know, I forgot to drag those trash cans over. First thing you're going to do is square it up. So what I typically do, because I know I'm going to cut this down, and again, I'd rather throw away a little bit of fabric and have it perfect, is I cut both sides of my ruler, and I get a manageable size of chunk. Make sure that your seam is pushed all the way in, so see how it's nice and lined up. So cut both sides of your ruler. What I do is I put my mat on the end of the table so now I can walk over the table and cut that side of the table. I always put my cutting mat on the end of my table so I can. Yeah, he puts on the tape on the table. Yeah, you don't want you don't want that tape on these rulers. Yeah, because you want the ruler to slide. The condom tape is for templates, not the trimmer part. True. Yeah, you're not you're not going to have my extra. You're going to cut one and three quarters, okay. eight times of the two first and the three first. Okay, so one and three quarters. Yeah. Okay. So 
Terrible. It just takes a little bit of practice there. And honestly, a lot of it is the weight of the iron. Even if you have to pull it a little bit, a little bit. You don't want to distort it. But if it gets the fabric to lay where you want it, you can do that. So so now we're going to do the order of our steps. Just do it. Just go over to it. I know that hurts you. I know. I'm trying to. Just remember that we're just going to make a one block. And you're not going to get that whole thing sewn together today anyway. So you'll have a block laying around that you can wiggle and move the rest of it. So should we use but that's why I have you bring ten colors. So if you can have you're only gonna make two of the eight and just flip them. So should okay. we use the ones we already cut? I mean, should these be the same? It doesn't matter. Okay. If you want to mix those up, you can, but like you could do two sets. Okay. And that's the other reason for the fat quarter bit too, because then you can mix your colors up more. So if, since you have yardage, that's okay, cut your strips and then come on the fold, and then you can mix them up more. Okay? But you wouldn't, okay. you wouldn't repeat them in a strip set. I wouldn't. No. What do you mean? You wouldn't do the same things? I wouldn't put the same two colors next to each other so that it looks scrappy. So are you this ruler, this would be a sub. This one, mm -hmm. and there's two. Oh. We're making oh, squares. Okay. So since we're making squares, we're going to cut our strip segments the same width as we cut our strips. So that. Yep. Think so. Remember we talked about the low side of the seam? Yeah. You're going to lock it onto that side right there. And I want to get to where each one of us has made one of these elements right here, and then we'll break for lunch. Okay? <laughs> Jackie, I think I've shipped you three boxes this week, so you'll probably get another box today. Jackie, Jesus, I just got a big box in the mail from Five Little Monkeys. I can't hear you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I love that fabric. I do too. It's very pretty. Especially since it's weak fabric. Yeah. <laughs> I am confused with that. Okay, so now what I like to do with this ruler yeah. is I will cut the band to the size. So I'm going to walk this onto the seam. So see how it grabs a little of the seam very good. Okay, I cut this side off and then I cut this side off and then I work with this. Instead of trying to maneuver the whole long strip, and how big do we make these? You're going to make them one and three quarters. Oh, one and three quarters. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 This one. Sure. Who's looking at here? Okay. Hey, you're the snack lady. Yeah. I'll let here the last time without going back across to the well bridge and getting an eclair before I left. Oh, no. We got down the road and I went, Ooh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was my fault. I forgot the snacks. It's okay. Yes. And my guesses aren't like <laughs> me. Don't pay attention to this. Right. Not paying attention to this. See how I've got my fingers in between the fabric and I can move it around? I didn't catch it. No, no. Then you can kind of just turn it around. Okay. Okay. So you want that to line up over there. Okay. And then don't worry about what it's doing over here. And don't worry about what it's doing over here. I guess it does. So now, now you're going to slide it in one way or the other. It doesn't matter. See how the numbers go both directions? Okay. So, uh, so that way, if you're right or left handed, either side will work. Okay. 
and she just did a different font on there. Okay. So you can see the difference. Okay. So I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if you slide this down, this is why I get like the new global size and know that I have a dog. So here's my one, here's my two. So I slide this into like the two quarter ones right here. And then this will go to the lower. So I'm going to try to do this right here. Oh, I see it now. This way works better. <laughs> That's actually something I'm doing right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm um, going to do you want my ruler? Do you want my ruler? I know, but you're going to get way behind if you wait. I got fresh meat over there. Define fresh meat. Is he cute? Oh, she's working on my fresh meat. My real fresh meat. I like it. And that's fine too. I don't know why. Either it's side works fine. Yeah, it's easier to like easier find to that line. Yeah. yeah. So how big is the middle strip supposed to be? One and a quarter? One and a quarter. So this is what I just brought in. Yeah. So you can see how these are all the yeah, it, it takes a little bit of practice to get really good ironing skills. Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. So, we do more of these? Not yet, so I want to get this elephant. Um, so, the three strip is going to be the same size. Yep. Mm -hmm. Or not. I found that laying in the because we're making squares. Like, uh, see that I don't know why. I don't know if it's because of the block all the logos. I got it. She was having questions on making that. I think we've already done this trip at the first. I Cutting my little pieces. 
Plus, it would work better if your ruler was on your mat. Like if your whole ruler was oh, yeah. on your mat. Because then you can lay it flat. Can we say hodgepodge? Oh, that's going to be really pretty. All right, so now since you've got your pieces cut. All the way to, you know, burgundy. That's really pretty. And now yours is going to look mixed up no matter how you do it. Yep. So, so if you want to start cutting your background, okay, here, we're going to make some three inch squares. So we're making, what did I say, nine of those or eight of those? Eight. So you can eight. get any eight three inch squares of your background. So what should we do with this after we, we're done? We should cut the marks on Yep. We're going to cut up the ruler, strip that ruler. And that's this thing. Yep. Yep. I'll show it all day long. Oh, yeah, that's why I'm seeing those three. These are my favorite backgrounds. These are my favorite backgrounds. How many strips and how many strips? Well, I have the other one of the two. Right. Oh, no, one, one, two, yeah, strip, and one, one strip. Okay. Okay. background. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's magic. That's why I bought this thing. Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I like to cut a section off. <laughs> Eight sections, eight segments. Eight segments of two and eight segments so of three. Uh, so we have our strips. So we have our strips. So we have our strips. So you have to look at yeah. your yeah. inch mark. Yeah. 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 That's what I said. I have some of those little okay. flags that you can use on like the creative grid to do a strip cutter. That would have come in handy to. So work. tell me what I. I the so we need to take right? mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to have to start. So, yeah. so then right. I can follow. Oh, okay. and, and I'm not leaving for lunch, so you don't have to take a break for lunch if you want to. We can go through that. Honestly, what I'm showing you yeah, is how sense. to make two elements, but the next part is a whole other set of things. Okay, well, I'll, I'll kind of go. No, I mean, I'll, by two, I'll be able to show you the next time. Okay. So I need a free I'm just saying, we're going to take a break at one. Okay. You can choose to go to lunch if you want to Okay. Um, like, I found the sores. If you don't tell them to eat, they won't. Well, yeah. No. Yeah. I have a little camp one year when I went to 4-H kids, and they did so not want to leave the sores. We had to force them to go to their next activity. You'll be back. You'll be back. Just one and three quarters. Yeah. I'm having a hard time seeing this one. It's kind of a good one. I'm having a hard time. 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 I'm having
So background fabric, you're going to make three inch squares. We're also going to make some that are three by four and quarter. So you've got three inch strips. This is a really neat example of how the peaks are made. See how your see how her selvage is naked? Because they actually stamp it. Yeah, make it. Yeah, isn't that cool? And I need to cut it this way, right? The, the, uh, or the other way? Yeah. It would be this way. This is just, this is the end of the bolt. Okay, so you got the actual end of the bolt. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's all over here. So normally you don't ever see that with petites because they will make like a hundred yard piece and then chop it up into smaller pieces. So that's like actually the end of the end of the bolt. <laughs> it was the end of the gray goods. How many of that ever size do we need? Two and three quarters. Just do um just do one or two. Okay. We're gonna it's just these pieces here. So two is probably fine, two different colors. Sandra, um, so Sandra said she skipped the gateway ruler and just went for the hard one. So she ordered the strip set ruler and then she just ordered the drunkard's path ruler. Oh, wow. So if you've ever made a drunkard's path and it makes you crazy, um, Jana designed a drunkard's path ruler that works like these where the groove is in it. So if you sew the curve and the curve's not perfect, the groove pushes the, the piece into place. I have one made downstairs. We're going to see what they look like. These are three inches, right? Yes. So we're going to make three inch squares. Sorry. And out of your background fabric, the three inch squares come out of your background fabric. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. It's kind of instantly gratifying, right? And mastering that quarter inch is important for all of the rest of what you're going to do. Actually, mastering quarter inch is important for every quilt you're ever going to make. Unless you're doing free form. When we do the second element, we will be using some that are two and three quarters, but we'll do that. It's okay to um, mess with the
Yeah, it's over. Yes, you're right. <laughs> if you're not making a mess, you're not actually sewing. My mother is the stringiest person that I have ever seen with sewing. My mom is so mad with strings. I'm like, my mom used to get mad at me because I would put the thread and throw them on the ground. And she's like, why did you throw them in the trash? I'm like, I'm not taking Yeah, Rebecca always comes up here after we have a class. She's like, what did you people do? <laughs> like, we made art. Like kindergarten craft day. And you said pressing, pressing the toward the background. The background. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I <laughs> okay, so we have our first learning opportunity. Uh, <laughs> so um, Jen cut her strips one and a quarter instead of one and three quarters. So she's like, wait a minute, are the squares, the background squares wrong? And of course, I barely see it. I was like, wait a minute, did I tell you all the wrong side to cut? Um, so if here, so here's the here's the point. If you're cutting your strips and they don't look like squares, then they're too small or they're too big. The the squares are white. Okay. So, oh, that's really good. So the white one, the white square. <laughs> <laughs> the background. The background. I'm gonna give you a hot tip on that. The background is three inch squares. All right, if you're having a hard time seeing the line, or you know you're going to make the same one over and over and over again, this stuff's called glow line tape. Yep. Okay? So we're going to take the glow line tape. Hey, my paint tape would have worked if I hadn't put it in the car. But you, don't, but you want to see it through it. Well, just to mark where to stop. We're used to creating grids or uh, quilt or select rulers. Yeah, these are not quite as visible as the others are. The background is So what I did for Jennifer's ruler is I put a bit of low line tape right there at the edge. So it's kind of like a, uh, like I always call it the cut your dummy line. Yeah. Okay. So that way it, it's just. I tell you guys all the time that I have to find ways to automate my brain so that I can't paint my way into a problem. So I have all of these little tricks that I do that stops me from doing dumb stuff. So glow line tape, and actually I took the glow line tape out to show you in the next element how to mark your ruler. But I didn't think about it with the strip set ruler. So you want some? Or you're good? I'm going to throw the black one off. Okay. We're going to do three, and we're going to do only because you have a little bit of We're going to do five and a quarter. No, they're all going to be cut one and three quarters. If we're making squares, and the strips are one and three quarters. Right. One and three quarters. Actually, let me give you one here in front of me so I know what. Okay, so. This is going to go, and I've got some glue now. Here's my little thing I know. Okay, so, I'm going to get myself a little bit of glue. Okay, one, two, 
one and three quarter. Oh, there we go. Okay. So we four on one. No. One and three quarter. There. Okay. So. That's it. And then, and then if you want to put the tape on, you can put this like this. If you know that that's the side you want to use, I think I'm okay with that with the tape. But that's how that works. Okay. You too. Okay. So then this one is also going to be one and, one and three quarters. Okay. So I felt like it's straight. Yes. You should always straighten up the first edge. I think that's the nice. other way, though. Use this to lock your seam in so that this is straight. Okay. And then clean it up. And what I do is I cut that side and this side, and then I only work with a small section. So you could just cut that one. Oops. You could just cut that end and then slide it down and cut. That's what I normally do. I clean up the edge. And you're still, what you really want to make sure is that you're locking on every time. And then here's your one in a row. Are you right about the end? I'm right handed. Okay. So should this, does it matter? Which direction the seam is? As long as it's locked in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're locking it in every time. Okay. And then you're going to cut one and a quarter one in, one of the threes and the two. One and a quarter? One and three quarters. Okay. Normally, when you're doing strips, that's yeah, just like your So you're always going to cut your segment down to what size you're Same count. Because that's how you're going to do it. And that's a really handy yeah. trick too. Lock it in first and then slide it back down so you know it's Make sure you pay attention to the pressing because you're tracing a cut to the right, not the dark. It doesn't have to be a little bit inside block. Whatever you're doing, 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 whatever so one and three quarters for everybody. One and three quarters for everybody. Thank you. Yep. Even when we make the strip sets that have the other size pins, you're still going to cut one and three quarters. Yeah. It's just right across the street. Okay. Two over hamburgers, too. You what? Two over hamburgers, too. Oh, yeah. You could do that. Um, I'm getting, I I'm still getting this out for, you do? For dinner, or whatever it was that. Oh, when you didn't have your wallet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she owes you dinner, she owes me an eclair. So yep. I'm joking, <laughs> I'm not worried about the eclair. It's really all fine. So when you say you got to press towards the center, is there some way I can sew it? The dress or no. Oh. You're going to press towards the square. Yeah. I'm alternating my colors. Gosh, that's going to be so pretty good. Now, another reason we press everything to one side is you'll find when you start putting your three-fur strips on, you'll be able to lock your seam. How many pieces do we need for this? Eight. Oh, okay. It's eight of each. Mm -hmm. Okay. Eight of all three pieces. Okay. And your background squares are cut three inches. So this should be what size should this be? On this I I never after that first go I never test it again. Like once I once I'm secure on my seam allowance I don't test it anymore. And when you're sewing these together, do you make sure that these line up? Like that. So that's what I'm saying. That's why we press them the one way or the other, because then you can mess them. Uh, I didn't know it would be. And here's a fun tip, too. When you have your seams nested, uh -huh. see how that one's going that way and that one's going that way? Mm -hmm. If the, whatever spacing is that way mm -hmm. is on the bottom, mm -hmm. it'll mess it better. Okay. Yeah, you want to make sure those go the opposite. Mm -hmm. You don't take it out. But if your if your little um, seam allowance is going into the machine, mm -hmm. it'll 
Uh-huh. That's why I like using my even feet on this machine. Yep. I've got, a, we've got an older friend, she's 83, that has this machine, and she does not like new tricks. She's an old dog who don't like new tricks. And I've tried to tell her that it will make things so much easier, but she, she ain't having it. Nope. She's also one that overcast edges every quilt she makes. Oh, Even yeah. if it has borders on it, she <laughs> over and we're like, uh, now, if I have a if I have a piece of border, I'll do what I call a victory back. Well, I go around and stitch yeah. and over, and sometimes it's and your longer you appreciate that. Yes, if it's a few, I just stitch over and then just go to each one and stitch <coughs> over it. But yeah, your longer longer appreciate has to go over past every one. I'm like to me with a border, not maybe, to maybe, leave the fabric. Maybe since she's, she's still gonna stretch. But maybe since she's old school and learned how to quilt on cheap fabric, it frays. Uh, it could be. I'm like, I'm not sure. Yes, we just didn't do that yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, those are going to be, those are also going to be three inch squares. We're just doing background. So, what you're going to do is you're going to cut your tip first. And you're going to put your cheek here. And then three here. And then you can press one way, they'll pop in. And if, and if you get to the, you might not get to the point where you put these blocks together today. So as long as you make the two elements, and you can save all these and you can make one another. So if they if they're all the same, you won't notice at once. Because and plus you also kind of turn them. So I just want to get to where we've made the two elements. Because once you've made the two elements, you can do the rest of this. The rest of it is really easy. And the biggest tip I'm going to give you with this pattern when you get home is pay attention to the pressing instructions. Yep. Because every pattern she ever wrote, the pressing instructions are magic, and the thing just clicks together like jig. I like that. Me too. I like this, these blues with this black. I'm really pretty. Yep. Did y'all see how Funky Don's doing the first stuff? Oh, got a black and white background. My girlfriend, Sandy, mm -hmm. I was trying to talk her into coming last uh, couple days ago. And I guess she decided not to do it. But anyway, um, she did a black and white and different color blues for her daughter in this fabulous quilt that she worked on for like three years. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I want to make something That's a great model. Simil you know, not similar, but with kind of some colors like that. So this is all I, that's why I wanted the black and white. Well, I like how you went really light with some of your motifs too. Yeah. It's like digging around looking for fabric last night. I figured, I remember, I have two fat quarter bundles, a 12. Mm -hmm. One is a black with little print, and one is a white mm -hmm. with, I'm like, when I saw that. Now, when I made that quilt cool last time, I strapped my background too. Yeah. I used white and cream and, well, that's you what know. I was thinking. It was like, I did too. the black and the white. That'd be really, really pretty. Easily. easily. Yeah. That would be really pretty. Yeah, the first time I made this quilt, in fact, I'm going to find that photo. Um, I did scrappy fatigues in the background. That may be a clapper out of a piece of oak handrail. <laughs> it was just extra that he had, and it worked perfect because you could hold it, you know. Mm -hmm. It worked perfect. All right, that makes me happy. Okay, 
Ooh. It was ombre. I love it. Oh, I put ombre in everything. In fact, when I'm making brown bags, I have to stop myself from doing ombre because I don't want to freak people out. But I know that it will look really cool with ombre in it. I peeked in Cindy's brown bag. Yeah. Did you like it? Oh my god. <laughs> it's gonna be super fun. It has all she said was Monopoly. She said board games or video games? Yes. So I did all board games. So I did yeah. Oh Monopoly money and yep. What is it? Uh the brown bag you were looking for. So these together? Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. I got it. And yeah. my so these border is gonna be the red of the this. similar print and it has like a bunch of different animals. Oh, oh that was cool. So the and then there was a brown Cow print uh, oh, yeah. and a black with a little white polka dot and a green yeah, with a little green polka dot matter. and then a flip them. It was a red, I think. This is really matter because you're not um, when you put this two stuff, you're not putting this to another scene, so it doesn't matter. And you're going to turn them anyway, so yeah. So that's why we're cutting three, three inch, three inch square. I like this ribbon now that I'm Yeah, it keeps on rushing on First time when me and you first got married, I was ripping it back and you put it on the lawnmower. <laughs> and of course, that's like, Rip. So he comes around the corner and says, What are you doing? <laughs> Hold it. What are you ripping? Ever. Mm. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I like that I put them off the I would just take them off the I'm going to lock the dark in the back. And while you have that laid out, if you want to save yourself some time, cut yourself a four and a half inch strip too. Like okay. cut a three inch strip and a four and a half inch strip. See, you're going to make that not even. I did that. I iron it. Because you're still trying to match yourself. No. Okay. Okay. See how your salvages are lined up over here? Yeah. Or I have. But that's the other iron. And see if I've got to come up with. Just saying, I would probably rip off that we have that. Yeah, that. Like, you know, this one. Oh, 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 rip it off. Or, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Just rip off chunks. And then you don't have oh, to no, figure out what I'm going to do. I can use yellow. Sorry, I'm going to go. You're not. Oh, no. You're not going to go. And you don't have to take so, much if you don't want to. I don't like to see once I get that far. I don't believe it. Oh, I have it. Yes. It doesn't, four. we just do that the first time four. to make sure we're in yeah, it. Yeah, we need to make sure it should, oh, those wait, should no, be one, four. Three. Yeah, we need to do three. Yep, one and three quarters. Yeah, you need how many? Eight, eight. eight. But, and eight background squares. We're only cut. we're cutting them on the diagonal, so we only need four. Right? Four and a half. For your background, eight. is that four and a half? Yeah. Yeah, you're going to cut them on the diagonal. But we only need four, right? Because we're cutting yeah. two per block, so we only need four. Yeah. Okay. So you need four of your background, and yeah. then whatever your other color is, the one that you put beside, you're going to do three and a half inch, four, three and a half inches of that. Yeah, I know. I don't know what I'm going to use yet. So I know oh. what pieces are in that piece in the block. Because I've got. I'm thinking, I'm, thinking yellow. I'm thinking, but I've got yellow. Yeah. I'm like, on mine, I'm going to see once I get to that point. I did my corner scrappy, and yeah. you can do that. You don't yeah. have to make them all matte. Oh, yeah. But the pattern is going to have you make your squares and your matte. Yeah. So, but that, that's yeah. what you Well, I said, once I know which four piece strip I'm using in there, yeah. then I'll know what I'm going to cut. It is not that hard. You're just going to cut a three and a half inch square. But the, the colored piece, the one that's inside here, yes. is smaller. Yeah, that's what I don't know what I'm going to cut. Honestly. I don't want to think about it. I just cut them the same size because yeah. you're going to trim it down anyway. Well, all these are so. exactly the same, right? They will be right now, yeah. If you if you know that you're going to make this into a quilt, you can save all these elements and mix them up throughout the quilt. Yeah. Um, that's up to you. But for the for the purpose of learning, we're just going to make the two elements. White paper and gray paper are my favorite background fabrics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, one of the guys that had a shop in Johnson City was selling out his fabric, 
and I bought an entire bolt of green paper for forty percent off. Nice. Wow. Yeah. But I, I love growing. I like growing. Certain colors. Thank you. Huh? Hey, babe. Yeah. This is this is more okay. colors. Rachel, whatever you want to go, I'll go. I know. So can you see how you get accuracy you won't get other ways by doing this stuff? Like it seems like kind of dumb things to do, but it really worked out in the end. Are people still watching us? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A little bit. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Look, however you entertain yourself on a Saturday is your own business. I think I might. Okay, I can't get used to seeing Jackie Meyer. I'm used to uh, Facebook. She's got all her names. All her yeah. names, yep. That was one of the things when I started filling orders on Comet Soul. Yep. Because oh, yeah. Comet Soul just pulls the first two names. I know a lot of y'all's middle names now. Well, my middle name. My middle yeah. name is my maiden name. Right. Yeah. So a lot of people. Mine's not, but that's what I use on Facebook. It took us a minute to figure that out because people come pick up their orders and be like, you don't have an order for that name. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, oh, no. Look under Donald Warbacker Smith. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And tag the To be fair, it's easier to find than Smith, so, you know. Yes. You know, I have factors that make us this close. Okay. Hey, Lane, do you have the social muscles? Hey, look at that. That's a pretty good cool Yeah, video. why an scar? Because that one we're really popping up. <laughs> good. Yeah, some of them are old. Yeah, so we're kind of editing those down and making them a little bit cleaner. Fussy cutting using your block block ruler. Yeah. That one's new. I see all your videos. I did watch the foundation piece in ones. That's an old one that we did. Have you paid any attention to the Civil War sample a little, that you're doing? Not much because I know I don't have the bandwidth to do it. So. Yeah. Well, that's I watched her beginner videos and she showed the first five blocks. And I'm like, you know, I don't want to do, I'm not a fan of scrappy, mm -hmm. you know, samplers. But if I can find a block that would be easy for our Clips of Allard group to use. Oh, that book is loaded with those then numbers. And I will, you know, because she's given sizes and everything. Like, yeah. I'll just make so where are we trying to get to? Like the third on this, and then we're done. Yep. With that. No yep. Problem. So now you're gonna sew. You have you have your background and your two piece, and then you're gonna add your three piece to it. So did we decide we are we gonna order in burgers or are we gonna um you can if you want to it's both bringing us food so because she's working but you can order in if you want you can go out if you want i do if y'all go yes. out Make i'm gonna give you a time when you back yes okay sure so See how that seems cool. If you want to bring in an order, to do this way so your scene is less. So if you want to pay attention to how they're going to lay, yeah. you have to yeah. make sure you turn them because your darks are going to be. Is that down here? Yeah. Yeah. No. Right. So here, what you want to have. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Six to a go. They're not the same. But they're not the same. So I don't think that matters. 
Well, I mean, there's two different ones. And this is really just for practice. If we overthink every step, we'll never get to the next So, even if you don't sew these together and just sprinkle them throughout the rest of your flow, that's okay. So even if they all look the same, um, we're not we're not going to sew these to each other. So you can put them in other parts of your quilt. Do you want to go to lunch now, or bring in the point, or what do you want to do? Um, well, I kind of wanted to break around one, which it's one now. But if you want to leave and come back, like if you want to go pick lunch up and bring it here and eat it, that's fine. I don't care. Um, if you want to, so like Susan, I think is going to go through lunch. Um, it's just if you're going to go and sit down and eat somewhere, just remember that we're done with this at four. So just a red gas magazine. Yeah, like yeah, like Maggie beans or. or Grab a burger or whatever, then that's fine. Um, but yeah, if you want to go and eat, I just would like everybody to be back by 145. So, because the other element that we're going to do, we're going to take this, this tricks we learned now and we're going to add to it. But I'm also going to teach you some new tricks with template plastic. I think we need those new Or at the pharmacy or at the at the pizza place. Yeah, they have ice cream. The pharmacy has really good ice cream. Yeah, they have um, ultimate ice cream. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but she's like, no, no. 
I don't I don't try to rush people through what they're doing. The only time I will try to push you along is if you're not actually doing the thing and you're, you know, doing something else. Like I have a couple people that are just talkers. <laughs> okay, let's focus. Okay, I have my yeah, I don't think any of my students are watching, but they're like I've been here all day. And I said, yeah, well, I saw you sit there for lunch. I saw you go visit over there. I saw you go into the other studio. I said, yeah. are you actually working? You got to actually time? focus. Because, you know, I don't care what you do with your time, but I know what I'm doing with mine, and I'm leaving it for. So, so what now what are you doing? So now you're going to sew your two first. Take your two pieces. Okay. okay. I think I'm doing an extra step there. You're going to take your twos. And we need to trim these down a little bit to the side of one of these. So all moved inside. Okay. And then you're going to press it toward this. And then we're going to put the freeze on top. Okay. Really like this one. I know anything about that. I really like that iron too. <laughs> Every time I get one in the well, little classroom, somebody buys it. So you could actually play hot. Maybe you want to say hi, baby. Maybe you want to say hi. Did you go get food? Yes, I did. You want to sit here since there's more room? Yeah. What do you want? Well, I came with Tim to get the rod. The rod for what? The rod of scanning and cutting. A rod of scanning and cutting. What are you scanning and cutting? Oh, so that means you need to go home and fix it. Yes, good, nice. It shall work. I gave you a Oh, what are we eating? Oh, I don't care what we eat. I did something. Oh, I'll figure it out. Oh, but he said he would come over and cook for us. I know. He's I, gonna say, make I said he could come and sew even after four. <laughs> Fair. But I have the, can I do oh, my I video at your house? Yeah. Should I do it at home? Towards the center. I just need Wi-Fi. Okay. Well, I know your phone is dodgy at your house. Can you get there and run speed test? Run it here so you know what your bandwidth is here, but you didn't the thing is if i do my video at home then i won't get to your house till two but if i do my video at your house then i can come in the morning <laughs> you obviously don't watch my videos too <laughs> sometimes i take it hey eat your own lunch He's, he, see, he tries to sneak into he tries to sneak into my lunch first. Baby, I just want to make sure. Baby, baby. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's the endearing thing for I do. Yeah. Did you hear what you Now I have BS sauce on my lunch. Where'd you go get food? Twisted. Our daughter works there, so she put an order in for us this morning. So, I know. It's handy. So, um, yeah, so that's fine. I can. Time changes. Nice. Right. Yeah. Okay, but I plan on showing up in my pajamas. I don't care. Okay. That's you want me to bring anything? You want snacks or? No, it's okay. Wine. Dinner. <laughs> you might want to bring your sparkling uh, water because I don't have any it right now. I'll bring some water. What? You can use my help with the video. No, she doesn't. I'll just make Avery do it. Uh -huh. <laughs> you can't find your way. You can help with the video by deciding what's going to be on the video. How's that? Because I haven't decided yet. So. Are we cutting these squares down? We are not. That's okay. Did you see my new project? I, I saw. I think I sent you a picture, right? No. No, I know they sent me a picture. So now I'm making all the rest of the blocks. No, no picture. Figure if I'm just standing here, I might as well trim down my own blocks. Wow. I like it when you trim down the blocks. <laughs> well, that's the thing. You don't trim down blocks if the elements are straight. So when you make your elements straight with a block block ruler, then you don't trim down your blocks. Because they're already done. That's okay. So. That's all right. One time, um, um, have, we'll have them over, and you'll have a sewing machine. We'll have a sewing machine. We'll do a, 
Around Robin, around whatever. <laughs> it's like four of us. Oh, yeah. That just oh. sounds like a drinking opportunity. How big should this be? Be? He's, He's my designated cutter. Four and a four. Did you say the designated cutter? Well, that's it. Yeah, Tim, you can cut all our stuff, and DJ can sell all our stuff, and we'll just drink wine and press everything. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> All right, I'll see you in the morning. Get there till after four. Here's the new handy shop edition. Uh huh. Amber's giving him a hard time. Look at him, Adam. So that those that. should be for when we're all done talking about you. Yeah, this is really good. Okay. Well, this there is one. That's not. Well, I'm gonna try to talk him into touching up the paint in the house instead. There you go. One and four is where you wanna be. Okay. There is one. See you later. Remember I said we're going to talk best practices and then I'm going to show you how to fix it? Is there a restroom up here? Yeah, through that door right there. I mean, if it makes you feel better, you can take that off, but I don't usually. Well, it might help me so straighter. Get ready to go. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. So you've got your background pieces. You're now going to cut. I got this. So what else do I need? To, did I need to cut more background? Yeah. You're going to cut four pieces of background that are four and a half inches. And then cut them in a triangle like she did? Yep. You're going to do that with, you're going to do four and a half inch squares with your background. And then that fabric that I said we put to the side to do these with, this here. You're also going to cut three and a half for these. Okay. okay. So you're going to do four of your colored fabric that's three and a half, and four of your background fabric that's four and a half. Eight patch strips. Three patch strips. Eight patch strips. So there's some that are doing eight strips. Mm -hmm. We're not doing that. Well, I don't know if you'll get time to do that, but. It's the same thing as what we just did, only instead of three, you're going to have eight. Wow. But we're going to do the two harder elements, and then we're going to do that one. Okay, so for the next step, put your background. You're right at your background, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're still doing those. Never mind. Yeah, I don't know. So you're okay. <laughs>
Do you have me to let me know down? So since you have me to let me know down, um, make sure you're doing that before you're threading, because if you touch your hand crank, sometimes the needle's not in the right place. But if you turn the hand crank and move the needle, then sometimes the needle's in the wrong place. That's what I was checking out. You good, Megan? Thank you. 
have done much of embroidery. Right, 
I think four, but I don't know for sure. What time do you need to leave? Three. Um, you need to leave. One? You can, I have to leave at two. Well, I mean, I could leave at two. <laughs> they wouldn't be happier with me. <laughs> Do you do a lot of quilting? Never. Never. <laughs> I think I quilted once. I did once last year. I took a class. Oh my gosh. Mary Angie's taught me everything I know. So <laughs> if I'm laughing. <laughs> no, she's. I took classes at National Cotton Gym. The last one, my clothing class, I took at National Cotton Oh, yeah. I, I thought about taking one there. That's where I bought my machine, so. Yeah. Did you like the class? Yeah, it was good. Do you do other sewing or just? No, I'm a potter. Oh, okay. I do ceramics. <laughs> okay. That's why I'm slow. I'm really slow. Well, I'm really slow. Because I have to be particular enough. Yeah. And I'm not good with like, oh, yeah, that's good enough. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you get to me. Every time. What class did you take over at Asheville Cotton? Well, I took the last one, quilting, intermediate quilting. Oh yeah, yeah. I always thought about taking that, but it was full. It was the, it was like taking making a sandpaper quilt. Yeah. Yeah, I made it, and I have it. I just haven't I haven't put it all together quite yet. But I'm going to. But they're pretty nice though. Yeah. Did you buy your machine there? No, I have um, I have a big Janome at home of seven. I did not, and I didn't get this one here. Actually, I got this at Beginning Quilts. Here? No, you know them. They're in uh, they're in Hendersonville. Oh yeah. From Hendersonville? Yeah, that area. Yeah. Where are you from? Oh, I live like two miles from here. So oh. well, coming here, like when I first started sewing, Andy kind of opened up the shop, you know, so she had all these like nighttime classes. Oh, and we made bags and we put the Hey, that means she found something. Let's go. So do you you do you do on the wheel? You're a wheel. Well, there. Right. I also have my hand too. Cool. Oh. So. Oh. 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 I do it all. Which is what we do. 
those. What were you make next? The pieces with the blue half square. Yeah. These pieces. Yeah. The background. That's what you have to have the four and a half inch. No, those are three and a half inch. The white is four and a half inch. Oh yeah, the white, but the the blue the, the blue ones are smaller. But Angie said she cut them the same because you're going to trim it anyway. That's a good question. Um, do we need a four strip? Did you make four strips? No, we haven't done that yet. Did you cut your three and a half ones or the ones that are I've only cut these because until I know what four strip piece I'm using, I don't know what color I'm going to cut on my squares. There's about oh, she did different color. She did different color. Yeah, she did kind of scrappy. Okay. All right, you guys all sugar up and ready to go again? Oh, that would yes, be ma'am. <laughs> no, okay. it's seven sisters. Yes, it was on her website. Do you remember the block lock quilt you were had worked on and I think it just was this one? No. no. It was like it used the kite and the triangle and the square and made a star. Oh uh -huh. That one is in Is it in this one? This is the one I made. Is it in this one? Is that the fantastic one? Ah, oh, that's the other one. Yeah, it's in the kiss. It's in the kiss. Oh, okay. It's this one right here. I know that this one that was. This one that's the silver one. I made. Just looking. I like that. But the other one is this one. Yes, that's the other one. Don't tell where we are. <laughs> this is that one that the kissy book. And this one is my spare count. That's what I will do. That round table down there is like covered now. Yeah. So you're welcome to run through all of those, though. Yeah, I have that one. Sorry. It's too much of a plate. I don't even know what time it is. It's too much of a We share. Okay. So Susan's real close to having her blocks done. You guys want to <laughs> <have> your blocks <laughs> together? Oh, 
<laughs> and these guys have their blocks. Okay. Megan's got her blocks almost. No, I have all my blocks. I'm just cutting out. You're cutting your fabric. Yeah, and I cut things. So where do I take so my Where do I take my Oh, I cut it up too much. I should have cut it. You need press? I changed it all over. You, you, you'll be able to, you'll see. I'm going to show how to do that other hard element, and then I'm going to show you how to cut the pieces that are, have a whole bunch of pieces in it, and then you'll be able to just follow along. The, the hardest part to this block is this element right here, and I'm going to give you some tricks on it. Okay. Okay? Yeah, you can just put these. Yeah, you can put those to the side. Okay. Um, <laughs> Jackie wants to make sure that you all know she's still hanging out so with us. Hey, Jackie, Jackie, Jackie. <laughs> Jackie! <laughs> she's already signed up for the retreat, too, so she's already picked out her shoes oh, for the yeah. retreat. I saw her talking about her. I asked her if she'd make me a pair. She, I don't know. She's she got, responded. She's got something weird up her sleeve, so. We have to wear special shoes. No, Jackie just is very festive, and so we had the Valentine's retreat, and so she had for all three days she had a different outfit, and different. She's the one that we I did a YouTube video where she shows how to put fabric on shoes. So she made shoes to go with the Valentine's retreat. So she sent me a picture of some shoes she bought the other day. And those pants that she made were so stinking cute that she wasn't able to wear. Yeah. You guys would have fun in the retreat. I don't know if it'll fit in your time though. There's one or two in July. July or June? June. July. Maybe it's the first. It must be the first week of July. Oh, it's on my birthday. Yeah. Oh, okay. All I know is there. All I know is I'll be in New York for the third week of July. Are you teaching? Yeah. Ooh, fun. So, okay. Next. So I had you cut three pieces of background, or four pieces of background fabric, and cut them in half. Oh, you guys well, I didn't cut one in half yet. It's okay. Diagonal. So the same fabric that you made your little three-inch squares with, you're going to cut four four-and-a-half-inch squares. And we're going to cut those in half. Diagonally. Yup. Diagonally. And then whatever fabric you put aside to do these blocks with, You're also going to cut three and a half inch squares of these here and cut those in half. Not all of them, though, right? Not all of them. So only the ones that aren't cut in half because of the corners. We're not doing that part. We're not doing that part yet. Not the nine, the eight square. Oh, okay. So the background fabric, we only need four. Four. Four that are four and a half, and then cut them in half on the diagonal. Yep. All of it's in the pattern. But I'm going to give you some tricks on putting these together. And the thing to remember about her patterns is the pressing instructions matter and they're great. But like I was saying earlier today, I've taken lots of classes from lots of people for lots of years, and so every time I take a class, I learn something new, and then I take all that stuff that I learned, and then I teach it to you. So the way that I teach people how to do templates now is because of this pattern when I made this 12 years ago. Like I personally think this is brilliant. Um, so like when I'm fussy cutting, I do this same thing. So if you want to fussy, so let's say for example. This is how I did this quilt over here, the one that has Elizabeth on it. See how Elizabeth is fussy cut the same in all of them? I use this technique to cut those guys out too. All right, so what I want you to do is get your pattern and your piece of template plastic that I gave you. And if you had a Sharpie tool, if not, I have some more. And you're going to want a room. Okay. Now, I gave y'all five inch squares of template plastic, and you're going to make a little bit smaller. But, but I still need these pieces, right? What if you don't have a piece of that? I don't have a shirt. That is going to be your background color, and that's going to be the three and a half. 
I just want to show this that these couple right. of steps because Susan's got to leave. Oh, okay. So these you're going to use these steps at some point. But yes, you are going to cut background fabric and we'll call it your accent fabric. Okay. I don't have a shirt. Okay. I got extras. I just stole these from Ada. <laughs> Um, okay. So what we're going to do, and and here's here's a tricky thing about this particular pattern. All of our blocks are going to finish four and quarter. So this one, this one, this one. So like this block we already made finishes four and a quarter. For it to match up with everything else, everything else is going to be four and a quarter, right? So what we what we do with this middle part, I'm going to show you how to do these in the middle part here. Should you turn around quickly to the SVU? Well, I'm thinking about something else right now. Yeah. So <clears throat> these are going to be four and a quarter. These little segments here are also four and a quarter. But the whole group is only three inches wide. All right. So what we want to do is make this four and a quarter. There's no four and a quarter rulers. So our rulers are four and a half or bigger. The ruler that I'm using is a six inch ruler. Maybe. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to make one a weird shape with a template and then how to use a ruler that's bigger than that to trim it down. So what I did was I took my template plastic and I traced out the thing that was in the pattern on the template plastic. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to lay our template plastic on our pattern. So here, this part of the pattern right here that has this template in it, this. Okay. Now, personally, is simply my opinion. I think that when they printed this pattern, this is just slightly off because this doesn't finish quite four and a quarter. But it doesn't entirely matter. What we really care about is tracing these lines. Okay. Is that we're going to trace out the black lines onto our template plus. Okay. The dotted lines are simply our, our seam allowance, but trace that out <clears throat> on your template plastic like this. Okay, now the other thing that I do when I do this is you'll see that one side is one of the triangles is bigger than the other. The bigger side is your background. So I actually mark mine as background on my template. Okay, then I've got double stick tape that you can use. We're going to take our ruler. Now, if you're using a ruler that has a 45 degree line on it, this is just this is just a hot tip. That line that's in the middle here is a 45 degree line. So if I take my piece here and I line this up, and I'm gonna walk around and show you this. I want to line this up so that the plastic is matched up with my four and quarter. Okay. So here's my here's my template that's on my plastic. That's my plastic is lined up with my four and quarter. The template is just a little bit too not quite right. All right. So now when I go to my block, I'll show you what this looks like on the block. The Quilter Select rulers maybe aren't the best for this because they have so many great markings that you can't necessarily see it. But see my line there? Mm -hmm. So when I line this up on my block, see how that fits on top of my patchwork? Mm -hmm. Okay. But my background piece is going to be my bigger piece. Okay, so when you get these laid out, we're going to tape them onto the back of your ruler, and then I'm going to show you how to cut a size that's smaller than your ruler. But wait a bit. Okay, so 
but these aren't your background fabric. No. We're just, we are simply looking at this line here. Okay. We're going to line up that line on that. And then, so see here, here's my quarter inch seam allowance because I've already put this together. Okay. And we're going to use this to trim down our pieces. Okay. But I wanted to show Susan how to do these templates and then how to square this down. All right. Yeah. Because I just cut like a five inch square because I wanted you guys to have practice cutting through the template. I will say that your quilted flex rulers are a lot better for cutting on the template cuts because they stick. Yeah. So they won't slide. Mm -hmm. What'd you do? Oh, you're going to need a lot more. Oh, thank you. Oh. Uh, this also drop your application, but didn't get any checks. Did you send it like they want? I have to check with somebody because my account sends out checks. I asked her to, so tell, tell her to send me an email about it and I will forward it to the accountant because she will give them a check. Okay. Um, I don't, I'm pretty sure she sent it because I know we talked about it. <clears throat> okay, so you're going to get your background fabric. I'm going to show you how to match this up. Now I'm confused because I used, I thought the background fabric was bigger than they are. Oh, they are. Your background fabric is bigger than your accent fabric. Your background square is four and a half. Your accent fabric is three and a half. And these are well oversized and you're going to square them down. Yeah, I have found that when I'm working type of plastic, my quilter sled rulers really stick to it, so yep. they don't slide around. My other rulers, they slide around. These are going to be other blocks to that. I'm just turning them down while I'm standing. <coughs> So see how she sewed her two here? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you're going to sew your two here and then you're going to press toward your background. So this is what the background block looks like. Okay. So she sewed her two and she pressed it toward the background. Okay. Then she sewed her three on and see how the seams nest? Okay. And then she pressed it back toward the background. Okay. So this one, this one, because I don't want the shoes together, right? Right. And it depends on how they're pressed. Okay. Yep. And then nest them together, and then you, you can sew them and sew them and press them forward to back. Okay. So the bigger triangle is your background. So I actually mark like background on that triangle. Look at how this graph is the graph lines. So I stuck it all on a strip. Okay. Who needs a marker? Yours is compared to the pattern that you have to look at these all. Is anybody trying to mark I do need your background. What about one right here? Yeah, I don't. Okay, so I have it. Who doesn't? Yes, it makes me. Okay, so I didn't cut them down. Yeah, it needs to be four or Yes. So if you use if you use a cold ruler like this, and it's eight. 
So now we're going to make the element that we use this to trim down. Right? So you're going to, okay, so now we're going to have, now we're going to make the part that goes in here. These are bigger. So you're going to use a one and three quarter and a one and three quarter. And then on the outsides, you're going to make two and three quarter. Okay, so you're still going to make sure that's what you did, but you're going to start with a two and three quarter, add a one and three quarter, add a one and three quarter, add a two and three quarter. Okay, so you're going to make sure that's what you did. Yeah, the one strip set will do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I'm trying to figure out if I could add the new pieces, but they're smaller. So I don't have enough. Yeah, your two and three quarter ones are different. Yeah, but I didn't want these. And I have a chunk of that. Let me go get that. Nope. I Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Let me get these here to help you take your machine back. Okay. I'm sorry. I think they're all late, You'll be fine with it. The pattern's really easy to follow. Let me get, uh, I'll get Abe up here and he'll take your machine down for you. Oh, I do have a piece of it. I'm a, I've got my other pieces out here. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like. This is what it's going to look like. The ones on the top and the bottom are longer. So remember at the beginning, we cut a bunch of one and three quarters, and we cut a couple of two and three quarters? It's going to go like this. This is a four and a half. That's the size of the ruler. Oh. We're using a four and a half inch ruler because you can't buy a four and a quarter. Susan's right there. This machine in that bag. Perfect. Press down. Now trace it. Trace it onto the plastic and then cut it to four and a quarter. Trust me, I already did this. Oh, okay. Yeah. I did. I did like one line with dots, and I did one like quarter. Yeah. Oh, for that. Well, and you're going to cut on your ruler, not your template anyway. So, yeah. But you just want to trace everything. Do you want to have me over here? Well, the Um, so Megan did my um, Quilters Academy class, the classes I used to do. Oh, 
those are so great. That's how I learned how to do everything. And I love those classes because they're very much a ABCs, this is how you start, or this is how you do it program. The problem is they're extremely time consuming and sometimes I wish I had a clone, but I'm pretty sure I wouldn't like her. <laughs> My friend so. Anna did that. She called it a techniques class, mm -hmm. and she, you know, had beginner sewers, and I helped her, like, compile all of her pictures that she, you know, her step outs. We took pictures. We created documents for each, you know, and then she always did something extra. Yeah. Um, we did, like, microwave bowl koozies. We did the potato bag. We did... We even did uh, salmon soup, you know, yeah. the applique. I did a, a foundation piecing, just a simple star shape. So it doesn't tell you it's how technique. to press this one. You press press what? What are we pressing? That's what is it? The big one. The next one. It doesn't matter. You're just going to make sure you press them all in the all same the direction. Same way. I typically press it to whatever I just added because then I don't have to think about it. Um, so I used to use the Quilters Academy book, um, and I like a lot of the things that are in the book, but I didn't like a lot of things about the book, yep. and so my, my plan was to kind of rewrite my, um, my lesson plan, and I did that to kind of put things in a little bit better order, but I just, that was all during COVID, and I just didn't get it back on, and then I started doing all the other things like the website and the lives and now we're doing shows and so I just don't know if I can I even thought about recording that class and selling it as a web class but there's so much to that class where I where I stand there and go if you turn this over it'll work better you know and that that makes the online class or makes it harder yeah. I've taken them other places and I think that I like Bruno. Yeah. That's just a different thing. I know. I know. I'm not writing that up, but <laughs> I had both of you guys in that. We don't talk about Bruno. <laughs> I like them fine. Yeah. That was good for me, but not anymore. Um, it's kind of what I'm trying to do with this series because there's a lot of things about this series that I still have the opportunity to teach you like basic stuff. Um, and even when I teach the beginning quilters academy stuff, I always talk to you with these rulers anyway because especially with new quilters, I want them to be confident in what they're doing. And when your pieces come out perfect, you have more confidence. Nothing I ever say about well, but you have more time to did once I showed you how to use block. Yeah. Even if it's just that part of it that it works. Okay, so I traced this thing. Okay. And we're going to put that to the side for now, and we're going to make our the center of our strip set, which is the one that has. What? We're going to use the two and three quarters. No, I think she probably turned it too small. Don't make it the size that's in the book, just draw the lines on. Yep. And then make your strip sets that go in the middle of that. Four. The two big ones are on the outside. Oh, what is it? Hold on, I'll show you. You're going to have a big piece here and a big piece here. So this is two and three quarters, and this is two and three quarters, and these are one and three quarters. Extra we had to cut in the beginning. The wider ones. The one and three quarters and the two and three quarters. Yeah, I don't think so I've cut my two and three quarters. So we're having a conversation about, you know, and we hear the whole time about 
people not wanting to spend more than $100 or so on the yeah. machine. So, so listen up, guys. This is interesting. So, did you hear what I said? I have a lot of people come in. They want to sell. They want to quill. But they don't want to spend more than like $150 on the sewing machine. Okay, so I just looked up in 1933. <laughs> oh gosh. You know the Singer Featherweights? Yeah. Everybody knows in 1933, the very first year they made them, they were $125. <laughs> 90 years ago. $125. And a car was how much in 1933? About $500. Yeah. Okay. And so here, 90 years later, the fact that you can still buy a sewing machine for $125 is ridiculous. Of course, you're not going to get a good one, but okay. it's just it's so funny. No, but it's the idea that that's what a machine is worth. Because if you said you're going to buy a car for $500, nobody would want to drive it. Uh, if it said the inflation, that would be $2,000. Which, it's easy to spend $2,000 on this sewing machine. Even if it doesn't really work. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think Bernina's, they start at about 2K for the selling So, yeah, it's just crazy. Throughout the years, 90 years. I would imagine that with inflation, it would be more than 2000 Yeah, oh, that's what it said in the article. Three quarters, two and three quarters. The bookend of the strips are two and three quarters, and the two in the middle are one and three quarters. You should have a the class on Tuesday, John, so you can't look old school. <laughs> um, you would like golf because you get a free class on the Tuesday. I'm not sure if, I'm sure they have both. The no, they have. I'm just not sure if you Different people. Different people. Different people. Different people. It's like going to camp. Yeah, I've never done a class there, but I'd like to. Here's the funny thing about John Campbell. Campbell. We, we have somebody that teaches a class here and charges 150 bucks for it, and nobody else signs. Yep. She charges $500 at John C. Campbell and, and has a witness. Yep. It's because you go there for the experience. Right. That's what I'm saying. But she's like, you know, I, I'd rather teach it here because it's smaller and I can do all the things. But I told um, I have a friend of mine, and I said, she says, I need to do something with my wife. I said, you should go to John C. Camp. Well, you guys like to make stuff. It's a really cool place. I've been there. I haven't taken a class. What? I've been there. I haven't taken a class. I think I was helping somebody else. It's a really neat um, idea. There's a couple of places around the country that are like retreat places that they just set up different kinds of retreats for different kinds of things and you're trying to get on those people. See, if you do it, then you could um, get a free class or you could take you know, someone with you and then they could do the class and get a free class and then you go. It's like the class that I'm doing in New York in July. A friend of mine has a quilting retreat center. It's one I'm going to go there and teach for people. I'm teaching just for right here. Um, and then right now I'm trying to get two shops to hire me to teach a class on the way up and along with that. That'll be nice. Yeah. I'm going to the best time to do Right, but this is only steps. It's just like but I do them all at once. So like last night I sat there and watched a movie and I sewed the logs on and yep. then I trimmed the logs. And so if I don't get that board because I change up, it's only about 20 that's minutes true. each step. Yeah, that's true. So She's fast. you're fast, so you shouldn't be bored. Yeah, <laughs> I am. Uh, I put a movie on you and just never know. grab some snacks and. So last night I put, like in an hour, I put four logs on, on all 28 blocks. Oh, yeah, okay. So it didn't take that long. So now 
now we cut this one again. One three. So now you're you have do you have the two big ones on the outsides? I have this. So I cut this down, right? Yep. So now you're gonna cut that strip also to one three. Yeah, not, not one and a quarter. <laughs> Jen, to make you feel better, in my scrap bin back there is four of these that were all cut the wrong size. So that's why I always make extra of everything. Because I'm gonna mess it up. People get so hard on themselves for messing it up, and I was like, that's how you one, that's how you learn. And if you're not messing it up, then you know what's the point in that? Or I don't know why we get so serious about it either. It's like, you know, if you cook, you burn things sometimes. You don't yep. stop cooking. You surely don't stop eating. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> what? She said if only you could. <laughs> I'm like, totally agree. <laughs>
All right, who else needs something ripped out? I'm on a roll. <laughs> You don't want to figure that out, cut them both four and a half, because you're going to trim it down anyway. That's how mine is. Oh, okay, so <laughs> it's like so, that because I mixed up ring. So, okay, I cut my background off. Okay, I'm trying to avoid the R and not the R. Okay, next thing I'm just going to cut the accent. You're going to cut three and a half inch or four and a half inch of these guys. Squares of these guys. Of those guys. Uh -huh. And then that. And four and a half of the back. Okay. And then you're going to cut them in half diagonally. Back around to and. Three and a half. Three and a half. Three and a half and four and a half. Or if you don't want to figure that out, cut them both four and a half. You're just going to throw away more power. All over the half. Yep, like this. But not the. Do like this. But not the accent. Yes, this is accent. Oh, yep. We're not doing those little squares yet. Oh, okay. So do, we oh, will. Okay. We moved yet. Okay. So do all four and a half. That's what I did. Okay. Well, I just want to figure it out. I gave the DJ the mark off. Four squares. You ready? So grab your triangles. And your middle pieces is where you want to bring them over here. So these are the ones I did wrong to put accents on both sides. Yeah, these are the ones I did wrong to put my screen because I did accents on both sides instead of a background. So, so on one side you're going to sew your background and on one side you're going to sew your accent. Okay? Press toward the... Yep. Yeah. Yep. And then we're going to trim it. Okay, so if we have these cut, what's next? Get your triangles. The squares you cut in half. Yeah. And bring those over here and I'll show you. Just bring me one of your middle and then a triangle. Yep. Doesn't matter. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to make a block that looks like this. Half of it's going to be background, and half of it's going to be accent. So I'm going to take these and hold them in half. Find my metals. Mm -hmm. I usually do one step or the first, line that up with your middle seam. So, so press it toward this, so the other one's on the other side. That's it. Yeah, just press them out toward your triangles. And then we're going to square them up. And then I'm going to show you how to square them up. We're going to use that template plastic. We're going to use a template plastic and a square ruler. 
and you're cutting leaves at what now? Uh, one and three quarters. Is that the last thing we're doing? Well, it's probably the last thing you're going to have time to do. That's the hard, this is the hardest thing though. So I wanted to make sure I did this before you left. Because the other the other thing that we're going to talk about is making a really wide strip set like this. Oh, okay. It's I the same that. thing. You just keep adding on to it and you just keep making it. Do, do you suggest making four strips and then four strips or doing it um, one at a time? Um, it doesn't really matter. Um, honestly, yeah, no. I would sew twos and twos and twos and then sew the fours and then sew the eights. Okay. The thing you want to do though is between each Prep each sewing, make sure you press it. Don't try to press the whole strip set at one time. Okay. Yeah. So remember, sew a seam, press a seam, sew a seam, press a seam. Right. So if you want to sew four seams and then press four seams, you could do that. And just make sure that you press them all the same direction. See how these are all going this way? Yeah, I got it. So you yeah, you can totally sew these two and these two and these two and these two. Okay. I'm just asking what you would suggest. <coughs> um I strip, I strip piece every, like I chain piece everything. Like DJ wasn't making it up. If there's a way for me to shortcut something and still have quality, I will do it. Right. But the thing you don't want to shortcut is the pressing between. Okay. So don't, don't, you know, I see a lot of people do that where they'll sew them all one way and then they'll press it all at once. But you're going to press creases that way. You, you just are. Mm -hmm. Okay. I got it. But remember in the baby quilting class where I taught you to press to set the seam and then press it? Uh -huh. The setting is important. So you, it's really hard to set a seam when there's already a seam underneath it. So like if this was all not pressed at all yet, so let's say these were all not pressed yet and you're, yeah. you're thinking, oh, well, I'm just going to lay it down like this and I'm just going to press them this yeah. way. Yeah. I see people do that all the time. There is no earthly way that underneath that seam is straight. Okay. It's just not. So. What I would do is set the seam, press it, and do all four of them that way, and then go back and sew them to each other. Okay. You just want to be sure that you're pressing them all in the same direction. It, just makes, it seems like it makes more sense to do a little bit at a time, like two or four. It does, totally. And especially when you're talking about making the whole quilt, uh -huh. and you know you need to make ten strips of eight, you just sit there and sew it. So like, DJ went out to dinner with his friend last night, and then I stayed here and sewed on stuff. And he calls me, and he's like, are you coming home? No. I'm like, what time is it? Because normally by the time he calls me and asks if I'm coming home, it's like midnight, you know. And sometimes I just get in the zone, and I just start sewing, and I couldn't even tell you what it is. We do that when we go to the church and sew together yeah. sometimes. Especially if I'm there by myself, and I've got my earbuds yep. in listening to podcasts, I just, I start realizing, man, I'm tired. <laughs> Am I hungry? Yeah. Do I need to eat? How many of these are we doing? Um, you're going to need eight, but you can just cut four, whatever you're going to get done with. Too many choices. I know. I, I should probably just tell you what to do. No, I'm trying to figure out my half squares, the colored half squares. What? Oh, these, these what? ones? Yeah, yeah. What will go with what I have already, but not be the same color right against it. Uh, so I'm dragging. I don't know if it matters. I know, but I don't. I don't know that it matters that much. Sorry. I don't have black. I have gray. Oh yeah, gray might be good. Gray goes with everything. It depends on whether it's a cool gray or a warm gray. Well, I don't think it matters. I gray. have everything over here. Because I want to, I want to use the. I thought about the bright orange for my three squares. Squares. Well, the pattern has used the same fabric in those two places. But you don't have to. I don't. No, I'm not, I don't have enough to do that. But I think I can get my orange out of. I forgot I was going to find that one that I did years ago. All right, Angie, if you were going to put that little half square triangle against my colors, would you use a light gray or the dark gray? I'd use all of them. I'd mix them up. My OCD you, you don't have, have a lot of this black is in there. Enough to me that but you don't have a lot of black That's in there. what I'm saying. So Should I, I use that or just like this? 
Are you just going to make this the wall hanging and call it good? Yeah. I'm okay. Then I would lot. probably do the, the lighter side because yeah. you've got a lot of darks in there. Well, see, I've got, and there's good kind of side or two. Mm -hmm. I would probably leave out the lightest and leave out the darkest and use the middle. Go in the middle. See, I've got enough right here that I can still Yeah. Okay. Because then I thought about using this purple. Like the lighter purple is pretty too. Oh, for the accents? For those, well, for the little high square triangles. Because I don't have light purple here. And these are up in the little other little squares. Little I only have, you know, two that are lighter purple. Mm -hmm. Let's see, you know, I don't think it matters. I wish I could move the fabric in there. All right. Can we try this? Well, this, this is the one that I made all these years ago. Oh my gosh, yeah. See, I, I did it. Even the background is But that's the one that popped up yeah. on my memory. Yes. And then, ironically, today, uh, the video popped up on my memory of them opening it. And the video well, of my other parents. Oh, okay. you think I should use this for that? Yeah. For the house first or for the house? Um, this. Take these. Sure. So, do I. You don't have to. You could do something else then. You can mix them up. Do I trim it? And there's the like yellow yeah. side. The uh, accents are three and a half. So get your square ruler. Oh, 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 Here's your backgrounds. Just sort of finger press it to find the middle. I love you have five match the middle of that. Yeah. So that one on, you can do the same thing on the other side. Okay. 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 Got it. And when you put those together, they'll look like Megan's does right there. And I'll show you in a So we're going to take our strap thing there. So, what we really want to pay attention to is the edge of this line that's right for the long Right. And then we're going to take our So make sure the first cut you make is this side. Line up your pieces. That shirt is really thick, so it's kind of hard to see. Okay. Well, it's got to do it with that. Here's your, here's that seam, and that's what you want to line up there. Mm -hmm. and you're not going to cut much off of that other side, but you want to match up that little ladder thing. You're going to cut two sides off. Now, since your ruler is the other size, 
going to take the other side of your ruler and line up four and four. And these go the other direction. So now we're not looking at the ladder, we're just looking at the four and four. Okay, so you only use the ladder on the first cut. The second cut, you're just cutting it down to four and four. Okay, but I always cut the, the accent one first because I can line up that background piece and make sure the background piece is bigger. But if you try to line it up over here, it's not going to work anyway because you can't see the one point. All right, so that, that's the element that you want. Okay, so that's how you're going to turn the rest of those down. So I only made one. Okay. Because I probably need to get going. That's fine. And then the other parts of it is pretty simple in the pattern. The rest of it's just patchwork. So, like, these three, you just cut the, the size that these are. Mm -hmm. The pressing instructions are in the pattern. Right. She yeah. has you press them all one direction. She has you press all these one direction and then nest. There's nothing to nest here. So you're going to make, so like this block here is two of those elements we just made with a piece in the middle. Right. So if you And the rest of this is easy. So this is a block, this is a block, not this. Right. They're all 10 and a half inch blocks. Okay. Like that. Okay. So, so we did the, the hardest the parts middle, first. The one in the middle. It's still, it's 10 it's and a half, half also. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you, what she has you do here is an eight inch piece. Mm -hmm. And you take the twosies and you just put these together. Were these supposed okay. to be? Okay. Um, I got it. I can see if I need anything, if I get going. Uh, and since the pattern, what I did was I broke down the pattern just to be this corner. Right. She gives you three different quilt sizes. To make as many as you want. To. But honestly, it's I mean, it yeah, is more than one block, yeah, but it's honestly these these are the five blocks. Mm -hmm. But this is the same as that, it's just half. This is the same as that, it's just half. Mm -hmm. Right? Fine. Yeah. So it's really just these blocks here. Right. This is just the most difficult element. Okay. Once you get the ruler to trim the pieces down and you make that that difficult element. And as long as you follow the pressing instructions, everything clicks together really, really like. So which where's our pressing instructions? The arrows. The arrows. So see wherever there's a black arrow, that's pressing. Uh -huh. Is that like I had to press them out? So did you. So when you get to the back back here and you get all your pieces put together, mm -hmm. so this whole row gets pressed that way, this one gets pressed that way, this one gets pressed that way. When you put the block together, you press them out. And since you press these out, then they'll click together. Okay? And even, even the row is just showing you. Okay? So anywhere you see a black arrow, that's her telling you which direction to press. Okay? Do you like it? Yeah, I like it. It's pretty, right? Yeah. That's going to be a really great quote. I have to come get volunteer. Okay. We can do that. Oh, darn. <laughs> well, she picks stuff we have. Exactly. Bit, you know, exactly. yep. but what I would suggest if you're going to make this quilt at home is make all of your strip sets and then cut them all apart and keep them like I like to keep mine in um, um, like a silverware tray because they'll fit. So you can put your twosies and your threesies and your foursies and your eights in the silverware tray. And then when you're ready to put them together, then they're all already there. Okay. Well, that's what I said. Like when I, that's what I told um, Rachel. I said if, if you're gonna make a whole quilt, it's okay that you're making eight that match right now because you can sprinkle them through the quilt. Right. But since she has yardage, she also decided to cut her yardage in half so that then it's easier to mix. It. That's why I have you guys. Never mind. That's why I have you guys bring fat quarters because you mix them up more with fat quarters. I want to have a water. Okay. I was going to put yeah. water in it. I sent DJ to get water, but I don't need it to come back yet. But this is really nice. Yeah, look how pretty Megan's block is. Beautiful. Did I not bring the water thing up? I don't see it. <laughs> okay, so you they're very right? stone hinging. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's really I want to show you. I like to play stuff. You know? Well, I know. She's got, she likes to play in there. there. Mine <laughs> over there. Where's your chest? I like her. I do. No, I don't like it. That's what I do every day. Like Karen, is this yours? This one, he goes 
garden? Yes. 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 yes, it has my little orange. Yes, my kids. Yeah, you have a square one. Or you have a bigger. Where do you teach at? I teach at UNCA. Okay. But they have a community big class. But they have classes at like Village Potters and Odyssey Clayworks. My kid goes to UNCA. He does? Mm hmm. Oh, what year is he? Well, he, he had so many kids when he started that technically he went into school as like halfway through his sophomore year. Yep. But so, he's only a second semester. So, um, where, what is his major? Or what is that? Oh, yeah, he's a nerd. Oh, yeah, that's the He's an Uber nerd. Can you come down and just say hello to me? Okay. He's he should take students. He probably needs a boost. He probably does. And he should ask me, and I'll let him in my class. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so, that's what he was complaining about because he has to get, you know, because we'll go on that. That he's majoring in statistics and then minoring in business and accounting. So, you know, the students that are very other majors sometimes are better than others. They are thinking. They know they have to study for <laughs> My niece, you know, because my niece got hers in chemistry and has a minor in criminal justice. Well, I have a student who wants to do forensics. I have a student who's majoring in physics and two double majors. Okay. Yeah, and she is um she's doing yeah. undergraduate research on they want it. She's making it for the founding the sound so that because they, they, they used it in bed and fours in medieval <laughs> cathedrals <laughs> because they didn't have speaker systems. So I know you put the extra time on that. I'm coming to watch so you don't have to tell me not to censure. I'm gonna turn this on. But um I think we're right now trying to get you first. Okay, just to make sure we're all it doesn't matter how to it. Okay. So, so are we going to make the world is all different? I don't know. Right. 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 Pieces of each color. Okay. And then I'm just now they're stuck on there. Your background is bigger. So this piece. So you're going to cut this side first. Okay. You're going to line this piece up with your background. And what I do is I pretty much just line that piece up. Okay. Um, and then uh, and it will. So we are going to put it in the corner to trim that corner and corner, right? Yeah. You're going to trim this block down right back okay. here. This is the background. Okay. So this first is a I don't know where it's supposed to go. Two. Which is so I Okay. So how many squares do you think that fat corner is? So those fat corners will make. Just a little bit. Okay. On the first side, 
not much extra. Which is why I sometimes I do my form and I use The first side you use the template. The second side, we're just going to cut this down a bit more. So we're going to use the line on the Okay. Now, organize. <laughs> Thank you. I'm in trouble. So the, the template itself has a little one. Okay. The little ones. Okay. Okay. And then you use the four and four to Do you want me? Roger. No, just put the water over there. Oh, thank you. I was standing down there and you looking through the like bundles of stuff. We were talking and I got up here and I was like. You left the bundles, didn't you? I left them in my arm because I was digging through them. I said, I gotta take those back down the stairs. Hey, look here. Who was doing the blues and greens? Uh that would be me. That's your blues and greens, Jen. Your blues and greens. So right after we had the retreat, I well, we went to Florida for the quote yes. show. And on the way back from Florida for the quote show, we stopped at my friend's store. She has a store in Jacksonville. And we were talking about how we started retreat. It was a whole bunch of fun, whatever. And she's like, she's like, yeah, we used to have retreats too, but we had this retreat one time, and same sort of thing. They had like eight or ten people that were in the store all weekend, whatever. She said, I was downstairs in my office doing some work, and I see somebody out in the shop, which you guys do the whole time you're here. You go downstairs, you buy things, you tell me what you want, I put it on your ticket, right? Well, that's what they did too. Well, this this lady that was in the class. Stole a bag bolts of paper. Oh, wow. How much did she steal? How did she she get that? Oh, What are the tips? How do you spell it? Well, I mean, she pulled the cardboard out of the fabric, folded the fabric over, put it with her purchases, brought upstairs, put her purchases in a bag. Oh my god. So yeah. That's a lot. They found eight empty bolts by the time they left. So she so she happened to be downstairs in her office working and she saw this lady a couple times this summer and then she found that there was some random empty bolts around. She's like, I know I didn't empty the bolt. Because as a shop owner, it's kinda like as a mom, you know, when your kids are up to something. Yeah. You know? So as a shop owner, I know when I empty a bolt of fabric. And even though some days I'll empty twenty bolts of fabric. And I know where I put my empty bolts. Yeah, in. you know they're not just in the shop. Right. So she comes upstairs. She's like, how am I going to do with this? She's like, I knew most people in the class. There was a couple people I knew. She's like, so I came upstairs and I was like, hey, listen. So I'm missing a bunch of things downstairs. And she was closed all day. The they were still in the class. The feet were still in the class? Oh, my God. So she's like, I'm missing a bunch of things. <laughs> you need to be on that show, the dumbest. Well, <laughs> well, and so she's like, I'm not, she's like, I'm not saying who it was. I'm not, you know, whatever. She's like, but you know, you just leave it downstairs before you leave. Whatever. Beth, do you want me to add those names? Well, so and then she left. Then she went back downstairs and did stuff. Well, there's other people in the class that are people like you guys, right? Like where, that I could be like, hey. Um, and she, she said that after the class, other people that were in the class were like, this one lady that was sitting in the corner, after you said that, she never got out of her seat again. She didn't pee, she didn't drink any water, she didn't do nothing. She would not leave her bag. And at the end of the time, when it was time to leave, she couldn't even pick her bag up. She had a really large bag. So I mean, look at the bags we bring, like this. How much rubber do you think you can get in that rolling cart? You know, I know my machine would take it yeah, yeah she so she didn't actually yeah but you could steal stuff because yeah. i mean i pack around mine just okay. oh yeah so, yeah but, oh, Emma, did you do anything with this you were right next to you because I could just see what you're doing. She feels busy. You know, when I'm on the check with people, you know the medium sized bag, which is not big, I can get nine yards of fabric. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, fabric. So, if you have a decent sized bag, you know, like this, you can get. 30, 30 plus yards of fabric. In so you're not being nice when you take my house. <laughs> <laughs> when you take our bag, you need to get close to us. That was because 
Deacon's like, oh no, Rachel's sounds pretty heavy. <laughs> no, no. You legitimately walk out of here with stuff you buy enough. You don't worry about it. Lord have mercy. We'll be last year for the retreat. Our deacons also accept that. You know, those I'm wondering if you can add a more from that scripture. Yeah, we bought a lot of stuff. Like when we get a shipment of the uh, wide backs in, well, box of wide backs, which yep. I think is like oh, eight bolts. So it's yeah. like more than that. It's more than that. It's more than that. When the when the wide backs come in to begin with, back. the bolt by oh. itself is about twenty five pounds. Oh yeah, I mean it's, it's 18, so 15 heavy. to eighteen yards. Yeah, uh, and it's new yeah, it's true. The one you have. Yeah, but yeah. That's one of those. I'm not sure how I would handle that. Like everybody that's come from the street so far, I know you guys. Okay, so if that was if that was a thing again, though, I don't know. Hey, here's a mark for the now. It's just the way my brain process. No, I know. It's like it's like that's beautiful. The other day, I mean, you're not really I mean, so I'm still, I spent too much time trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I'm going to be
Or am I carrying that way? That's a long, long way. Okay. From selfish to self. Okay. I just put like around my head in my head. Um, let's see. How can, um, do you want to cut them in half before you tear it? What? Do I? Or no, I, I would tear it and then tear it. Would you? Yeah. Okay. Because then if it breaks off, it only breaks off once. Mm. Right. And you can rip it in half, too. Okay. You know, you can do that, too. Oh, I just thought it was funny that Karen started getting it, but it was used to start laughing. <laughs> well, if Bonnie would have no, said something. No, I wouldn't have done that. Yeah. Say something. But you know what? I asked for it because at the beginning of that video, I said something about how I don't have any people talking about videos anymore, and they're not there to us. <laughs> <laughs> and she showed up. <laughs> my little alert on the app reminds me. I've been, my problem is, it's like, it's not loud enough. I missed it last night and didn't even, it was like 15 minutes in, so I missed the whole first part. And, she, and Jen messaged me and she was like, did you, did you get an email? I was like, no, because she had said earlier in the week she was going to send an email. And I did. I sent it on Wednesday. Because I think I messaged you and asked you about what time we could get here and you said 9.45 and you said I was sending out an email. Yeah, because we were working on the email when you texted me that. Look how pretty. Look how pretty you are. Beautiful. Very, very nice. Very nice. Okay, so these are the hardest elements. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take your, is this your exit number? Yeah. So basically what's left as far as patchwork, you can do the eight strip set if you want to. That's another thing to do. And you do the eight strip set just like you do everything else. You just make eight strips and cut them into one and three quarters. So this piece is here, and you're going to use your three-inch background and your twosies. So you make a row, and a row, and a row, and then you put these in between. Yeah, it's in the pattern. It's in the pattern. And I just broke up the blocks to make one repeat. Yep. <coughs> like right now, I'm just making a couple to make sure I get it done. So this piece right here is why I have you bring 10 back quarters, because then you can put eight different colors in this. This is this one. Yep. Yeah, you would think you would make the, the loop as a block, but it's not. You it's not. Thinner and then work your way out. Well, it's not because that's not really the pattern. No. I just put all the elements into a wall hanging. Yeah. Because that was my intention with this class to begin yeah. with, was to have a wall hanging option kit, um, a throw quilt, and then a like king size bed quilt. But with everything that happened in the last month, I just couldn't get it together. Yeah. So we'll do that in the next one. You'll have the option, like if you don't want to scramble and pick out fabric, you just say, hey, I want a wall, wall size pink one. And I put the kit together for you. And then you don't have to think about it. Okay. Well, we wouldn't have had to have thought about it if we got the, gotten the email. Because yeah. <laughs> ah. I'm like, I know what the pattern says, but I don't know what we need, you know, for the class. Right. You just need two things. For the block, yes. And well, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna make a whole, so that, yeah, two sections. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you're still gonna, you're gonna make a whole strip set anyway. Right. You're just gonna cut them off, and then the other pieces are just this. Yes. Yep. And then all the other blocks are just variations of this and square. So it is the kind of pattern that you can like do a little and walk away and do a little and walk away, so long as you keep it organized when you walk away. Because yep. if you come back to it later, you're going to be like, um, I know this is this this best right here is driving me nuts. Yeah, I'm a little OCD about stuff like that. But when you get home, that's what I do with mine. Is I I have um, these little bins that I get from um, Harbor Freight. Yep. And I, when, I, when I put a quilt away, I put everything in that one bin with a label on it. I don't do clutter well. You can't tell that at all by my sewing space, but clutter makes me really anxious. So 
that's my that's gonna be my project for this week is to make my <coughs> sewing or my filming space look more like a filming space and then um, I got my nails did this week so that I could do close-up videos of walk off the board. Yeah. I haven't had a manicure in so long. This is shameful. I get pedicure. Uh, yeah, you know, but I don't do it. See, my I nails so hard did not hand. grow yeah. when I was on chemo. Right. And some of my fingernails came off. Yeah. So my nails don't grow at all. But my problem is I've gotten, we got acrylics done before we went on our cruise. Yeah. My daughter did. And my nails are shaped weird. Yeah. They're more flat, so the tips don't lay. So no, then, my I'm, nails like, curl then I'm constantly with my little needles, you know, or pins, mm -hmm. digging the stuff. And I was like, I need to find somebody because I keep seeing, and I'm sure they're China and Japan, the gel That's what yeah. that forms it to oh, yeah. and it's makes, a no, it makes a nail because mine are so short. But I like short nails. I don't want long nails. I just work so hard with my hands all the time yep. that I don't see any point in getting my nails done. No. But um, I also get face or comments on YouTube about how um, my nails are distracting because I don't. Have them. Well, I don't it like, drives me nuts. Yeah. So <laughs> don't um, not watch it. Don't, don't look at this. So no, I don't. Right. right. So anyway, so and I. See, I don't pay attention to that. I, I didn't even know. pay attention that Angie was messing with me. <laughs> <her. laughs> Well, I'm on my phone, so exactly. but still, I don't pay that much attention. I'm, like, I'm usually listening or I'm, hitting the shot. I didn't even know see what I missed. I didn't even know how to play with your hands. I always play with my hands. This is what I do. But anyway, so I I hadn't had a manicure in so long that she had to literally like like dremel my cuticles off. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So my fingers finally, it's like three days later, my fingers finally don't hurt. But Just ignore it. 
I will eventually delete it. Usually you see those getting deleted about 11 o'clock at night. My nephew lost uh, $500 on one of these car scams. The, uh, a Honda Accord for $1,200. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He uh, he lost 500 bucks paying through Cash App. Yeah. Not a certain thing he could do about it. Nope. And I kept trying to tell him. They're like, oh, well, he's going to go to the bank. I said, I'm telling you right now, if it ain't going to do him any good. Yeah. Cash App, you might as well forget it. It's like handing somebody cash money, and there's no way you're going to get that back. Yeah. Unless they were to give it back to you. The only people and I they didn't money, believe me. The only people I send money to with Cash App is my kids. <laughs> well, see, we use Zelle. We yeah. Use, uh, and I love Zelle. Zelle. Yeah, it's safe. Yes. Yeah. The only problem is my husband's credit union that we use doesn't use anything like that. Yeah, our credit union and doesn't either. And therefore, you know, it's like, come on, I'm trying to move money from his account to my Eastman account, and I can't. <laughs> Jackie, are you talking about what we were talking about? Jackie's like, yeah, somebody just hit on me with, through one of your live feeds. <laughs> Yeah, and every time that happens to one of you, I get 12 notifications because it happens to at least 12 of you, and then I have to delete each one. Oh my gosh. And it's funny because it's always like the same six pictures of like guys dressed up in yep. military uniforms. And it's always the same guy. It's always the same guy. Yeah. They just want to see Jackie's beautiful shoes. They do. They, Jackie, they want to see your shoes. A lot of people out there with feet things, you know. Mm -hmm. Yep.
But see, it's not really steam in there. It's not really steam. Steam is not coming out. The last time we did that, I had to take the filter out and soak it again and put it back in. And then just put it back. Oh, no, I have got him out of order. Ruh row. Oh, my Lord. You're fired. My OCD is going to kick in. Ah. I know, but this is, this is playing Scrappy. Ombre Scrappy, so I have to keep him in order. Um, uh, sure, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a broken one. All right, let's just make sure I get one right now. Do you want this? No, just throw it away. I've got gems. So y'all would want to come on Thursday and leave on Sunday, right? Yep. Yeah. Oh, 
not there locally in the Maybe tomorrow, or maybe by the first Yeah. Okay. 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 glanced over and I thought we had a cross stitch frame. Hell no. <laughs> oh, I had no, put together I had put together four of my big hexes with the stars that I was piecing at the right. retreat. I've got four of them put together. Nice. So I just keep on making. I gotta figure out when I'm gonna stop. I guess when I run out of stars. Yeah, this is definitely the design drawing. Brother Chief. It's only the this is the third time in seven years I'd replace a whole uh feed unit. Oh, the machine, <laughs> which is, you know, the feed dogs, the hook assembly, the whole thing. Wow. So, it looks good. Not bad, though. Three, like, three of them in seven years. We have about 40 minutes. So if there's things you want to ask or questions you have,
Is everybody feeling pretty confident on this? Yeah, um, the, that's the way. <laughs> Triangle. But I haven't had fun, but we can, um, do the, uh, well, you have to, yeah, we can do it. The angle thing. So, hold this down. So you line that little hole in the C. Okay. Okay. And you sew that one on. You're going to fold this one in half. You do the same thing on the other side. Okay. I definitely okay. was a little bit of a one and a half and you want that one here. Okay. So I'm going to hold my custom color design. I know. Well, I would slam on fabric. But I could have at least cut it four. Because it's like one edge. I didn't even trim anything off of it. We need to build a pit for some of you tonight. It I got your stars bonus kit for the block of the brown bag. Which one you got? The patriotic. Oh, right. I'm going to make it to you on my card this week. So oh, okay. I made some fun. I'll probably make it square instead of pointy, but I don't know. We'll see what happens when I get to that point. So basically, I just need to make this
So he said, I'm just going to get a knife out and I'll shave the little half just enough to let it last. Or, or pineapple next 
because I'm really loving this log cabin. I'm going to keep all this extra because I can. And honestly, I was making those logs so I could see if I could teach it in a student class. Yeah. And I easily could teach it in a student class. So that's another, that's one of those Thursday through Sunday retreats, but it's, we're doing it here. Angie, yes, you just find the stuff at the car. Right? Yeah. Well, the other one, so whatever one you're going to do, we're going to do it. Oh, look, it's right on my little, it's right on my little pocket. Okay. Is it ready for you? For oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. 
So yeah, cut a chunk off of that. So uh, three and a half. Three and a half. Or bigger. So Angie. Mm -hmm. Finished you finished it. it! And I gave it to the recipient. You like it? She did. Oh, she already got it? it? Yeah. It's so pretty. Beautiful. It felt so nice to get to me. This is not good. It's almost bad. It's not good. 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 Yeah, and honestly, one of the reasons I put off the pineapple thing was because I have a Robin Roof pattern that uses a pineapple in one block and a Robin Roof there to sink this in the block next to it. And I really want to make that quilt. So I might just show the pineapple technique and then show that pattern too. Trent, did you? I feel like on one of your Facebook things, maybe that's the one. That, was there one made out of Anna Marie Horror? A broad room. Um, I did one out of a wheel. I did one with a wheel pattern. Yeah, I thought there was one. Um, Could be. I don't know. I slept on that. I don't know. And then you were out of the pattern. Um, for a while. I don't think I ever ended up getting it. Maybe. Uh, was it a kit or was it a no? It wasn't or was it a demo? It wasn't kitted up. It was. A, I think it was a demo. I know I did an O'Deal one as a demo. Kind well, of and it, it may have been you just suggested that it would look really good with Anne Marie Horn. And, and it would. Yeah. And I was thinking, oh, that's I've got a lot of that. That's what I want to do. But so do you have the pattern? I've got lots of patterns for for Robin or Robin patterns. I'm not sure if I have the, the section up here. Yeah, this is the one I did on the video. I should have finished the quote. It's another example. But this was the demo for that one. And I do have this kit now. But this was all the power pieces. I just never finished it. So, in that, that kit, are you you're doing the that? Mm -hmm. They go in the bills. Ah, okay. But this, this is the size of the piece. So they're small. Small. Well, they're not like that other one. Yeah. That the, these are the elements to that one. Now that I finished the other one, but when, like I said, there was just a whole bunch of uh, things. Yeah. That happened, and it was it was an overwhelming. Um, and it was the way that we did it too. But yeah, but it was just also just the whole this was a hard concept for us back in the day. Yeah, especially over Zoom. But this is the demo that I did on this fabric. Pretty cute. And it's not as big as that. No, not as big. And I was, I was, the Zoom was fine. I just had, I had, and it was nice I had to go back through and walk and walk through and through if I had to. Uh, I was amazed at the well, they just do. And, and Robin's technique is another one that if you press it the way she says, it works. Like if you do what she says, it works. It works. But yeah, this is you know same sort of thing. When you press them, they just go together. But this one you make four, you make four big notes, and then the applique is just these big. Leaves. And then you chop such them up. Yeah, and that's the most happy thing I've ever done. Yeah, that's really made it easy. Somebody will probably. I'm going over to Air Sauce tomorrow. Because yeah. I don't think I'm going to be able to do a sew day. And so I'm going to have to do Whenever we do things like that, I try to do things that aren't for the shop. That's like stuff for me. Oh, I'm going to take the time to say, okay, I'm ready. You should. And sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't. But I really am having a good time with this little cap coat. I'm like, I know. The whole and they had one. That's a deal. That's the same fabric. Oh, that is. Okay. Is it all of it? Okay. Is this quilt? Uh -huh. Yeah. I, okay. I was thinking, but it's just cut up so small. Okay. I thought it was that lucky, buddy. They had one pack. It's all ovial, and then cut the cotton in the background. So now we're going to line up the letter. 
If they didn't, I would say I can get you to treat him like a car. I know, I was like, oh, what am I going to take him if they don't have him? He's just say so much. No. Do you want to take it? I do the like I I swear I've got a glitch in the system. Shocking. What do I do? Real quick. He said he saw this happen once before, but he doesn't. Did you mark it as unpaid? Or did you do a partial payment? No, it was just partial. She definitely paid, so I don't know. And of course, I just like hit my buttons and then walk away because I had somebody else. And then when I walked up to her, I was like, Okay, let me just do that because when I put that back in, you have to quote, you have to close the window. Oh, he's like, wait, I'm not done. Look at look at the So to close, so to close out the if you have to close it like it won't close, close, hit that twice and then then throw it like Swipe it up and it'll go away. All right. The answer is almost always turn it off and turn it on. Blow on it. So you cut the two. Then you're going to take it. You're going to How did you turn the rat way? Not the template. So you're going to ignore the template. Okay. Is it all in there? Not very well. Okay. But if you have questions, please do it. We'll talk more often. Okay. But don't pay any attention to this. Okay. If it makes it easier, when you cut this the first time, just cut all of them on the one side. Okay. Take a template off mm -hmm. and then cut it off the other side. Okay. 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 Um, it, the template it does if I send it in the back of my car, oh, yes. it will roll. Yeah. If we don't have enough to pack it in the back, they go in the back seat. <laughs> How's that look? So that's what I, in this case, yeah. I got one. <laughs> I, got I had a uh, issue. Oh, I thought that. Now, how in the heck? I couldn't do that again if I tried. Yeah, I got to hook on my. I did really good. Thank you. 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 My social media I'll take it down. Okay. This is why I gotta go check out. Yeah. Can we shut down the laptop? I think so. I charged it. I forget that it's on. Are they still on there? <laughs> um, I think so. Oh, Jackie says to show the camera. She wants to see what y'all made. Oh, uh -oh. She wants to see your colors. All I have is a picture. Come on, come do like a little parade. Sorry, Jackie, we forgot you were over here. <laughs> Up there. That one. Ta -da. See, Donna's got all her earth tones. It matches her outfit. I really like Karen already packed hers away. Yeah, I'm trying to. Where do I go? It just, the colors ain't. Look at the mustard. She loves this color. Look at her mustard fountain. Isn't it pretty? Woo I'll have to send you a better picture, Jackie. Right here. Yeah, and look at how bright her colors are. They don't look that bright on the on the. No, but it's like rainbow bright. I'll kind send of bright. you a better picture. It's great. Oh, All right, you guys. So that's what we got because everybody else started packing their stuff up and two of them already left. So, yeah, they made some really nice, pretty things. So we're gonna turn y'all off so we can pack everybody up. Um, but I'm sure I'll see you online tomorrow, right? Because I got a live tomorrow at one o'clock. So. Yep, come join us tomorrow. See ya. Bye. Bye bye. Lighter the background. Yeah. And then the second cut should be square. Mine actually.